Judah. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Before the traditions and heritage of the Israelite bloodline was hijacked by the heathens and the serpent seed, before the heathens transformed our culture into a religion, our fathers led their household under the statutes of the Most High. It was a custom of the fathers to gather their children to them before they transitioned to the afterlife. Adam, Seth, Noah, Jacob, and many other righteous men followed this custom, including the 12 sons of Jacob. Judah gathered his children to him before he transitioned to the afterlife. The copy of the words of Judah, what things he spake to his sons before he died. They gathered themselves together, therefore, and came to him, and he said to them, Hearken, my children, to Judah your father. The prophecies Judah revealed to his children and descendants concerning their life and future certainly came to pass. Before we hear of the final commands and message Judah had for his children, let us find out who is Judah. Judah is the fourth son born to Jacob and Leah. His mother named him Judah because when she saw she conceived another son, she said she would praise the Most High. Judah means praise. I was the fourth son born to my father Jacob, and Leah my mother named me Judah, saying, I give thanks to the Lord, because he has given me a fourth son also. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah, and left bearing. Judah is the progenitor of the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is under the umbrella of the Israelite bloodline. Judah and his brothers are not the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. Jacob is the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. It takes two Israelites to transfer the Israelite heritage to their children. The Israelites who marry the strange woman and man cannot transfer the Israelite bloodline to their children. When it comes to the tribes within the Israelite bloodline, the tribe of every Israelite is determined by the father. The Most High do not want the tribes to mix. If you are from the tribe of Judah, the Most High want you to marry within your tribe. Because the Israelites are rebellious and stiff-necked, a law was put in place for the children born to the Israelites who marry outside their tribe. The statute the Most High made said the children born in the union of two different tribes will identify with the tribe of their father. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best only, to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. If a man of Judah marry a daughter of Zion from the tribe of Benjamin, their children will be Judah. If a daughter of Zion from the tribe of Judah marry a man from the tribe of Benjamin, their children will identify with the tribe of Benjamin. I repeat, no strange woman or man can make an Israelite. There's a lot of misinformation about the strange woman that is not a daughter of Zion having Israelite children. If an Israelite married a strange woman or man, they are establishing their own bloodline. 
the Most High warned his people not to marry the strange woman and men. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them, thy daughter. Thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. The scriptures in the Bible give us a little information about the sons of Jacob. The Apocrypha books will give you the background information about the sons of Jacob that the scriptures do not reveal. Israelites, when you read the Apocrypha books, use discernment and always listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Like the Bible, the so-called lost books of the scriptures are altered also. When Judah gathered his children to him, he revealed to his children about his life, as well as told his children what would happen to them in the last days. Judah married a Canaanite woman named Bashua. And when I went to him, I saw Persaba, king of Adullam, and he spake unto us, and he made us a feast. And when I was heated, he gave me his daughter Bashua to wife. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. Judah married Bashua, a Canaanite woman, when he was drunk. He did not get the permission of his father before he married the Canaanite woman. The father to Bashua was a king and he used money and wine to get Judah to take his daughter for a wife. When Judah married the Canaanite woman, he sinned against the Most High. After I had drunk wine, I reverenced not the commandment of God, and I took a woman of Canaan to wife. The Most High did not want his people to intermingle with the Canaanites. The Canaanites were a cursed people, and the Canaanites descend from Ham. The Canaanites were wicked, and they worshipped all kinds of pagan gods. Isaac forbid Jacob and Esau from marrying a Canaanite woman. Esau did not listen to his father and married a Canaanite woman. Jacob took a wife from his mother's side of the family. And Isaac called Jacob, and blessed him, and charged him, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban thy mother's brother. The book of Judah revealed that Judah struggled with drunkenness, fornication, the love of money, and women. Judah revealed when he is drunk, he is not in his right mind and make bad decisions. While he was under the influence, he married Bashua, the Canaanite woman, and had three children by her. Judah said to his children he was aware that the Canaanites were a wicked people. And I knew that the race of the Canaanites was wicked, but the impulse of youth blinded my mind. And when I saw her pouring out wine, Owing to the intoxication of wine, I was deceived, and took her, although my father had not counseled it. Judah said he was young and blind when he made the poor decision of taking a Canaanite woman for a wife. The Most High killed two of Judah's sons for their wickedness. Judah's poor decisions continue while he was a drunkard. Judah's oldest son, Ur, whom the Most High killed, took a wife named Tamar. Bashua, Judah's wife, did not like Tamar simply because she was not a Canaanite. After Judah's failure to give his youngest son to Tamar for a husband, Tamar plotted against Judah. The book of Judah said Judah was under the influence when he saw Tamar. Judah thought Tamar was a prostitute, approached her for sexual relations, which result in a child. The Bible and the book of Judah give us an account about Judah's and Tamar's union that was against the will of the Most High. In the Israelite culture, what Judah did was an abomination. And after these things, while Tamar was a widow, she heard after two years that I was going up to shear my sheep and adorn herself in bridal array and sat in the city of Enaim by the gate. For it was a law of the Amorites that she who was about to marry should sit in fornication seven days by the gate. Therefore, being drunk with wine, I did not recognize her, and her beauty deceived me through the fashion of her adorning, and I turned aside to her and said, Let me go in unto thee. And she said, What wilt thou give me? And I gave her my staff and my girdle and the diadem of my kingdom in pledge. And I went in unto her, and she conceived. 
Judah revealed to his children at his deathbed that they were the children of Shelah, his only son that was not killed. His son Shelah married a Canaanite woman. His mother did not want her son to marry Tamar. She made her son marry a Canaanite woman behind Judah's back. For a long time, there was a doctrine circulating of Israelites not being African or the bloodline of Ham. Some Israelites, mostly in the camps, hated Africans. A lot of Israelites quoted the infamous Bible dictionary saying, not the Negroes. If you're from the tribe of Judah, your foundation began with an evil Canaanite woman, Judah, your father took for a wife. His only surviving son, Shelah, married a Canaanite woman as well. The Canaanites descend from Ham. She bare me Ur and Onan and Shelah, and two of them the Lord smote, for Shelah lived, and his children are ye. And while I was away, she went and took for Shelah a wife from Canaan. To the Israelites that look down on the seed of Ham, I will say to you like the Most High said to me when I judged Judah and later discovered I was from the tribe of Judah. Humble yourselves. Judah had many unclean spirits tormenting him and leading him astray. The spirit of jealousy, fornication, the love of money, as well as pride. Judah confessed to his children that wine turned aside his eyes and pleasure blinded his heart. In his sin, he lay with his late son's wife and married a Canaanite woman. The judgment for his iniquities from the Most High is that he would find no pleasure in his children. And the wine turned aside my eyes, and pleasure blinded my heart. And I became enamored of, and I lay with her, and transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and the commandment of my fathers, and I took her to wife. And the Lord rewarded me according to the imaginations of my heart, and as much as I had no joy in her children. Everyone will be tested, no one is exempt. Judah had his struggle with sin, like all people. The Bible said everyone have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Most High. Judah did repent of his sins. He stopped drinking and eating meat until he was an elder. The Most High blessed Judah in many ways. The book of Judah reveals since his youth, Judah obeyed his father and mother. I was swift in my youth and obedient to my father in everything. And I honored my mother and my mother's sister. The scriptures said in the book of Exodus to honor your mother and father if you want it to go well for you. Judah understood the meaning of honoring his parents. Because he honored his parents, he was blessed. His father blessed him when he became a man and said he would be a king and prosper in all things. And it came to pass when I became a man that my father blessed me, saying, Thou shalt be a king, prospering in all things. And the Lord showed me favor in all my works both in the field and in the house. The Bible revealed the blessings Jacob bestowed upon Judah when he gathered his children to him before he transitioned to the afterlife. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Judah, thou art he, whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. The book of Judah confirmed the kingship Jacob blessed Judah with. The book of Judah also revealed Isaac blessed Judah as well with the kingship. He received the kingdom because he was obedient to his father in all things his father command, he did. For even wise men among my sons shall they mar and shall cause the kingdom of Judah to be diminished, which the Lord gave me because of my obedience to my father. For I never caused grief to Jacob, my father, for all things whatsoever he commanded, I did.
And Isaac, the father of my father, blessed me to be king in Israel. And Jacob further blessed me in like manner. And I know that from me shall the kingdom be established. Honoring your father and mother brings great blessings from the Most High. Today, this generation is disrespectful towards their parents and elders. Many Israelites and indigenous black people are missing out on great blessings because of their disrespectful ways. Many Israelites and indigenous black people can't get along. The spirit of division has overpowered the indigenous black people. The Most High gave Judah the kingdom for honoring his parents. Judah was a warrior. He was strong. Before there was a King David, Judah's descendant, Judah killed lions, bears, and other wild animals with his bare hands. I know that I raised a hen and caught it and prepared the meat for my father and he did eat. And the rolls I used to master in the chase and overtake all that was in the plains. And a wild mare I overtook and caught it and tamed it. I slew a lion and plucked a kid out of its mouth. I took a bear by its paw and hurled it down the cliff and it was crushed. I outran the wild boar and seizing it as I ran, I tore it in asunder. And a leopard in Hebron leaped upon my dog and I caught it by the tail and hurled it on the rocks and it was broken in twine. We read in the Bible of King David killing bears and lions by himself, like father, like son. Israelites, the angels are very involved in our everyday life. The angels carry out the will of the Most High. The Bible do not go in great details about Judah's strength. Judah would seize cities and fight entire armies by himself and win. When he went to war with his brothers and father, they would win the war because of his strength. His father Jacob had a vision about Judah. His vision revealed Judah had an angel of might that followed him everywhere he went. Therefore, my father was free from anxiety in the wars when I was with my brethren. For he saw in a vision concerning me that an angel of might followed me everywhere that I should not be overcome. Judah's strength came from an angel. Judah also fought against the seed of the fallen in his generation. The seed of the fallen continued to make an appearance throughout the generations after the flood. Judah swing heavy stones at his opponent and kill them. Judah and King David shared the same warrior spirit and had the strength to kill wild animals with their bare hands. And I wound my garment on my hand, and I slung stones at them, and killed four of them, and the rest fled. And Jacob my father slew Bilisath, king of all the kings, a giant in strength, twelve cubits high. Acre, the king, a man of giant stature, I found hurling javelins before and behind as he sat on horseback. And I took up a stone of sixty pound weight, and hurled it, and smote his horse, and killed it. The Messiah that comes from the tribe of Judah, from the lineage of David, that will deliver the Israelites when the time comes, is also a warrior and the chief warrior prince. Judah, David, and the Messiah have the warrior spirit. Most kings are warriors. That is how they defend their kingdom. The Most High has a way of setting the stage. Rome's Messiah is not like the Holy One of Israel that would deliver the Israelites at the end of Jacob's trouble. Judah warned his children and descendants to not take pride in their strength. Judah said, glorifying in your strength was evil in the sight of the Most High. And walk not after your lusts, nor in the imaginations of your thoughts, in haughtiness of heart, and glory not in the deeds and strength of your youth, for this also is evil in the eyes of the Lord. Judah prophesied to his children, commanding them to honor the Most High and obey his statutes and commandments. Judah revealed what his children would do in the last days. The prophecies Judah prophesied against his children are a sign on the tribe of Judah. Those signs will help you determine if you descend from the tribe of Judah. The Most High said he would gather Judah from the four corners of the world. The kingdom of Judah consists of the tribe of Benjamin as well. One of the many warnings Judah gave his children and descendants to stay away from wine and alcohol. And now, my children, I say unto you, be not drunk with wine, for wine turneth the mind away from the truth, and inspires the passion of lust, and leadeth the eyes into error. For the spirit of fornication has wine as a minister to give pleasure to the mind, for these two also take away the mind of men. 
But if ye would live soberly, do not touch wine at all, lest ye sin in words of outrage and in fightings and slanders and transgressions of the commandments of God, and ye perish before your time. In every Israelite neighborhoods, the workers of iniquity put a liquor store as well as a beer and wine store. These liquor stores are very successful in the Israelite neighborhoods. The liquor and wine stores are usually full of Israelites and indigenous black people buying wine and alcohol to have a good time. Judah warned his children that he made poor decisions under the influence of wine. The word of the Most High said in the Bible that no drunkard would enter the kingdom of the Most High. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. The tribe of Judah, as well as all Israelites, need a reality check. As the signs of the times are upon us, Israelites everywhere need to examine themselves to see if they are a part of the remnant. The time to take your salvation seriously is now. Another warning Judah gave his children and descendants, not to love money and lust after women. He said through those sins, he was led astray. Judah went on to say, by these two sins, his tribe will fall into wickedness. And now I command you, my children, not to love money, nor to gaze upon the beauty of women, because for the sake of money and beauty, I was led astray to Bathsheba the Canaanite. For I know that because of these two things shall my race fall into wickedness. The Bible said in the last days, the love of money will increase. Today on social media, every other post from Judah is money and material possessions. Judah said the love of money and fornication will withdraw you from the laws of the Most High. The love of money will make you ignorant and his children will not have compassion for their people. King Solomon's downfall was his many wives. Judah said to his children and descendants, the love of money leads to idolatry, a sin the Most High hates. The Most High warned King Solomon before he took the kingdom away from him that his many wives would lead him into idolatry. Solomon loved women, just like his father King David and Judah. Today, the Israelite nation is divided into two kingdoms. Israelites, I will keep teaching about the sin of idolatry until Israelites everywhere understand how great that sin is. My children, the love of money leads us to idolatry, because when led astray through money, men name as gods those who are not gods, and it caused him who have it to fall into madness. For the sake of money, I lost my children, and had not my repentance and my humiliation and the prayers of my father been accepted, I should have died childless. But the God of my fathers had mercy on me, because I did it in ignorance. Judah continued to struggle with women. In the awakening, some Israelites used the word of the Most High to justify their love for the strange woman and men. They created a whole doctrine to support their lusts. History have a way of repeating itself. Judah command his children and descendants to love Levi. Judah said, do not exalt yourself over Levi or you will be destroyed. The Most High gave Judah the kingdom and to Levi the priesthood. Judah's kingdom is the earth and to Levi his kingdom is the heavens. Judah said to his children that they would be kings in Jacob. The Most High chose Levi to draw near to him. For to me the Lord gave the kingdom and to him the priesthood, and he set the kingdom beneath the priesthood. To me he gave the things upon the earth, to him the things in the heavens. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so is the priesthood of God higher than the earthly kingdom, unless it falls away through sin from the Lord and is dominated by the earthly kingdom. For the angel of the Lord said unto me, The Lord chose him rather than thee, to draw near to him, and to eat of his table, and to offer him the first fruits of the choice things of the sons of Israel. But thou shalt be king of Jacob. The Bible confirmed the Most High chose Levi and took Levi for himself. That is why Levi is not given an inheritance among the Israelites, nor is Levi considered a tribe in the nation of Israel. Judah revealed to his children that they would go into captivity. Some of his children would be rich by stealing other people's possessions. Judah revealed the Most High will bring division in the Israelite kingdom. When Solomon transgressed the laws of the Most High, the Israelite nation was divided into two kingdoms. Judah only had one tribe that followed him. The rest of the ten tribe followed Joseph. 
Judah said that there will be wars in Israel and his kingdom will end until the salvation of Israel comes. For as on the sea, just and unjust are tossed about, some taken into captivity while some are enriched. So also shall every race of men be in thee. Some shall be impoverished, being taken captive, and others grow rich by plundering the possessions of others. And the Lord shall bring upon them divisions, one against another. And there shall be continual wars in Israel, and among men of another race shall my kingdom be brought to an end, until the salvation of Israel shall come, until the appearing of the God of righteousness, that Jacob and all the Gentiles may rest in peace. And he shall guard the might of my kingdom forever. For the Lord aware to me with an oath that he would not destroy the kingdom from my seed forever. The southern kingdom of Israel, called Judah, came to an end when the Israelites in the kingdom of Judah disobeyed the Most High and were scattered into all the kingdoms of this world. Just as Judah prophesied to his children on his deathbed. Today, the impostors the world recognized as the descendants of Judah are falsely claiming Judah's inheritance. Judah revealed to his children that his kingdom will end until the salvation of his people. The impostors are claiming Judah's inheritance are the wealthiest group of people in the world. They have a nation in the Middle East that is supposedly practicing the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. The Most High gathered the so-called Jews and gave them the right to return. The Most High gathered only them and left the rest of the tribes. The impostors control governments and they are the CEO of major corporations. They can have laws passed to protect them and nobody else. They can influence many to follow their abominations. How is that possible if Judah's kingdom ended until the salvation of the Israelites? I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Judah said his children will practice witchcraft and idolatry. They will follow after the people that have familiar spirits and demons of error. Judah said the men of Judah will make their daughters singers and harlots and will mingle with the abominations of the Gentiles. The tribe of Judah certainly did mingle with the abominations of the Gentiles, the abomination of Rome. So many cannot come out of her and her doctrines. Now I have much grief, my children, because of your lewdness and witchcrafts and idolatries which ye shall practice against the kingdom, following them that have familiar spirits, diviners, and demons of error, ye shall make your daughters singing girls and harlots, and ye shall mingle in the abominations of the Gentiles. A lot of Israelites are under the spells of Rome. Rome used familiar spirits, witchcraft, and idolatry against the people of the Most High. Most indigenous black people become millionaires and billionaires in the satanic entertainment industry. The music industry takes the leading role in destroying the people of the Most High. A lot of the raunchy music from our people is destroying the women, turning them into harlots, just as Judah prophesied. The influence of music from the indigenous black people is destroying the indigenous black community. Idolatry, witchcraft, and sorcery continue to be a problem in the Israelite community. A lot of Israelites use sorcery against themselves. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Judah prophesied to his children that the Most High will bring famines against them and pestilence. Pestilence are infirmities like the so-called pandemic, death by the sword, the slaughter of your children, the rape of your wives, and the plundering of your possessions, the burning of the temple of the Most High, the Holy Land will be wasted and the tribe of Judah will be in enslavement among the Gentiles. For which things, saith the Lord, shall bring upon you famine and pestilence, death and the sword, beleaguering by enemies and revilings of friends, the slaughter of children, the rape of wives, the plundering of possessions, the burning of the temple of God, the laying waste of the land, the enslavement of yourselves among the Gentiles. Our father Judah prophesied before his death that his descendants would be enslaved among the Gentiles. Everything the descendants of slave in the diaspora is experiencing today align perfectly with the testimony of Judah to his children. 
Israelites, it is important to research and ask the Most High to reveal to you his truth. The truth is written in the words of the Most High. This is why so many of the writings from our ancestors were destroyed or hidden from us. There's no denying who the descendants of Judah are with a testimony like the one from Judah to his children written many years ago. There's only one group of people that match the prophecy to the children of Judah. The ones the world recognized as the tribe of Judah are not. Israelites, the impostors know they are not from the tribe of Judah. The impostors are trying to keep you from knowing and claiming what rightfully belongs to you. The Bible said they conspired against you to cut you off from being a nation. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Israelites, you don't need their approval to claim your bloodline and inheritance. Don't be afraid to correct the misinformation that is out there from the synagogue of Satan. Never in history have the impostors been enslaved in all the kingdoms of this world. Judah prophesied to his children that they will make some of the men of Judah eunuchs for their wives. And they shall make some of you eunuchs for their wives. Eunuchs is defined as a male that is castrated. Many Israelites were castrated during chattel slavery. Some are still being castrated until this day. I don't see the other species of mankind castrating the imposters. Judah said his descendants will go through all that he prophesied until his descendants repent with a pure heart and walk in all of the commandments of the Most High. Once the people of the Most High repent, their captivity will be reversed from among the Gentiles. Judah said after his children repent, then the Prince of Peace shall rise in Jacob. Judah said the Prince of Peace will rise from his seed. Some of us know who that is. A lot is still mesmerized by Rome. Judah said when the scepter to his kingdom shine again, the Messiah would deliver the righteous as well as the righteous Gentiles that call upon the Most High. Until the Lord visit you, when with perfect heart ye repent and walk in all of his commandments, and he bring you up from captivity among the Gentiles. And after these things shall a star rise to you from Jacob in peace. Then shall the scepter of my kingdom shine forth, and from your root shall arise a stem, and from it shall grow a rod of righteousness to the Gentiles, to judge and to save all that call upon the Lord. Judah said to his children and descendants that after all is finished, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will rise unto life. Judah and his brothers, the 12 tribes, Parchiak, will rise also, and they will be chief of the tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. And after these things shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob arise unto life, and I and my brethren shall be chiefs of the tribes of Israel. Levi is first and Judah is second. Judah revealed the inheritance of the head of all the tribes in the kingdom. Levi first, I the second, Joseph third, Benjamin fourth, Simeon fifth, Issachar sixth, and so all in order. And the Lord blessed Levi and the angel of the presence, me, the powers of glory, Simeon, the heavens, Reuben, the earth, Issachar, the sea, Zebulon, the mountains, Joseph, the tabernacle, Benjamin, the luminaries, Dan, Eden, Naphtali, the sun, Gad, the moon, Asher. After all of this is accomplished, there will be joy in Jacob and everyone will serve the Most High. Judah again said to his children to observe the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Judah instructed his children to hang on to the ways that please the Most High. Judah died at 119 years old. Observe, therefore, my children, all the law of the Lord, for there is hope for all them who hold fast unto his ways. And he said to them, Behold, I die before your eyes this day, 119 years old. Israelites, everything you want to know, the Most High will reveal it to you. Some of our people must practice what the scriptures said about being slow to anger and slow to speak. Nothing in the physical realm is as it seems. Truth will triumph over all enemies. The word of the Most High said the truth shall make you free. Don't be afraid to learn truth via the spirit of the Most High. You can't trust the heathens. 
the workers of iniquity inserted into the scriptures what they wanted. Little did they know the Holy Spirit would lead the anointed of the Most High to many other scriptures that will reveal the truth. The Most High said, heaven and earth shall pass away. His words will never pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The Most High said, if you look for me with all of your heart, you will find me. Israelites, open yourselves to truth. The truth is what makes you free. Don't perish for the abominations of the heathens. In the last days, knowledge will increase. Before our culture was transformed into a religion and our heritage hijacked, we had order and structure in our nation. We had leaders and a way of life. Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked and our people ceased from being a nation, lawlessness rule in the times of the heathens. We don't have to be partakers with them in their lawlessness. Judah, our father, spoke to his descendants. Are you going to obey the voice of our father or are you going to obey the voice of Rome? Israelites, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part, and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute for ever throughout your generations, that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as an heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, Among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. Most Israelites who wake up from their slumber, the first thing they want to know is what tribe they come from. I've received countless emails from Israelites from all over the world asking me how do they find out what tribe they descend from. Israelites, you're not going to know what tribe you come from unless the Most High reveal it to you. If the Most High believe it's necessary for you to know what tribe you descend from, he will reveal the information to you. The Most High want his people to repent and return to him. Our primary focus is repentance. As you elevate in your journey, the Most High will begin to reveal himself to you as well as your purpose. Israelites, make repentance your focus in the awakening. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, 
Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The Testaments of Judah is the first chapter in the Twelve Tribes series. Analyzing the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarch could help some Israelites know what tribe they descend from. Judah is the tribe most Israelites identify with. The tribe of Judah is also the easiest tribe to locate because the Most High said he would scatter Judah to the four corners of this world. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Most Israelites born outside of the continent of Africa and descend from slaves in the diaspora identify with the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is the tribe I come from as well. I made Judah the first chapter in the 12 tribe series. The second chapter of the 12 tribe series is about the tribe of Levi. Before we begin with Levi, I will share with you my testimony of how the Most High revealed to me that the tribe of Judah was my tribe. I hope my journey could help those of you who desire to know your tribe. Like most Israelites, when the Most High woke me up, I wanted to know what tribe I come from. I asked the Most High in prayer to reveal to me my tribe. I didn't ask any other Israelite, nor did I follow the false 12 tribe chart. I have no problem going to the Father and asking him for what I want. I never shy away to speak with the Most High. I always go before the Most High boldly and ask him for the things that I want, as well as asking the Most High questions that can help me with my spiritual journey. The scripture said, some have not because they ask not. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Israelites, if you want provision and protection from the Most High, it is important that you go before the Most High in prayer and ask the Most High first. Don't ask your favorite YouTube teachers, friends, family, and the heathens before asking the Most High. Remember, the Most High desire first place in your heart. The way to get result from the Most High, you must ask the Most High first and believe in your heart that He will respond to you and grant you the desires of your heart. The Most High said there's no good thing will He withhold from those who walk uprightly. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. Israelites, if you're having trouble hearing from the Most High, make sure sin is not found in you. If sin is found, you're not going to hear from the Most High. The word of the Most High said sin separates you from the Most High. Israelites, that is why it is important to repent. Once you petition the Most High in prayer, the Most High will reveal the answer to you via his Holy Spirit. Once he answers your prayer, the Most High will send someone to confirm the response he gave to you. Confirmation can come from your friends, family, teachers you trust, and the word of the Most High. Confirmation can come from music or a movie. Once you receive the confirmation, the Holy Spirit will nudge at you by reminding you of the question or prayer you asked the Most High. That is how you know the answer is from the Most High. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Once I asked the Most High while spending time in his presence, what is my tribe? I didn't research the scriptures to find my tribe. I simply asked the Most High and went about my life. I didn't stress about what tribe I came from. By the way, in my heart, I had an idea of what tribe I came from, However, due to my ignorant view of Judah, I didn't want to descend from the tribe of Judah. I've talked about my low view of Judah in several messages. The Most High changed my views on Judah. Through a lack of knowledge, I judged Judah harshly, just like how I judged the Israelites as a whole when I read the scriptures in ignorance. It took two years for me to accept the confirmation given to me. Israelites, 
when it comes to timing, the Most High is always on time. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. The Most High can answer your prayers and questions swiftly, or he can answer several years from the time you ask. You must trust the Most High while you wait. The Most High knew that I didn't like Judah. The Most High wanted to change the negative view I had of him. The Most High said to me, you're no different from Judah. Two years after asking the Most High, I received an email from a fellow Israelite. The email said, the world know who we are and where we come from. Included in the short email was an attachment of a currency note. The person who sent the email sent another email with a larger picture of the note and asked me, what do I see? When I examined the note, the first thing I saw were ships. The next thing that stood out to me was the lion sitting on a crown. The moment I saw the lion sitting on the crown, the Holy Spirit reminded me of the question I asked several years prior and had an absolute assurance. Like our father Abraham, I believe what the Holy Spirit was confirming to me. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. The person that sent the email, I've never met him or her, nor did we had prior conversations. We didn't discuss what I discovered about the currency note either. He or she shared the pictures with me and vanished. By now, some of you know that I'm a private person. Only a select few have seen my picture when I posted a picture several years ago. I don't share much about myself on social media. I've never shared where my family and I are from before my family moved to the USA as a young child. The currency note the person sent me was from the country where my family and I was born in the diaspora. Whoever sent me the email had no knowledge. He or she just shared something they discovered with me that so happened to give me the final confirmation I needed to repent. Judging Judah was like judging myself. The Most High wanted me to know not to do that because I descend from Judah. The Most High wanted to change the low view I had of Judah as well as to believe what I knew was true from the beginning, but I didn't want to accept. That is how the Most High revealed to me, my tribe. Israelites, be patient with the Most High. While you wait, trust the Most High and lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Israelites, don't follow popular trends. What is popular with the world is an abomination to the Most High. Trust the Most High and he will direct your path. Now to the tribe of Levi. Who is Levi? Levi is the third son born to Jacob and Leah. Leah called her son Levi because she believed birthing to Jacob three sons would make her husband Jacob join to her. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. Leah was not Jacob's choice of a wife. Jacob labored seven years for Laban to receive Rachel for a wife. Jacob's uncle Laban tricked him and gave his oldest daughter Leah for a wife to Jacob. In Laban's family traditions, the youngest couldn't get married before the oldest child. Jacob had to work another seven years for Laban before he could have Rachel for a wife. Jacob loved Rachel. When Leah birthed Jacob's three sons and Rachel was barren at that time, Leah believed her children for Jacob would make her husband join to her. That is why she named her third son Levi. Levi means attached or joined. The scripture said Leah was despised. That is why the Most High opened her womb to birth more children for Jacob than Rachel, the woman Jacob loved. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. There's a lot of scandal in our family's bloodline. These scandals are made public to the world because the synagogue of Satan transformed our heritage into a religion. 
Like the scripture said, we all have sinned and fallen short. Laban is Jacob's mother, Rebekah's brother. Jacob married his cousins, Leah and Rachel. Jacob, Leah, and Rachel are indigenous black people. Leah had the most children for Jacob, six sons and Jacob's only daughter, Dina. The 12 tribes of Israel are indigenous black people. Israelites, due to the times we're living in, there are some people that are trying to bring heathens into the Israelite bloodline. Don't believe them. I am glad a lot of Israelites have awakened to the falsehood of the 12 tribe chart. Ask the Most High and he will tell you what tribe you descend from. The patriarch to our nation always gathered their children to them to bless them and inform them of what will happen to them in the latter days. We will discuss what Jacob prophesied to his son Levi before he transitioned. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. Mine honor be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man and in their self-will they digged down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. Jacob was displeased with Levi and Simeon for attacking Shechem when they defiled his daughter Dina. Because of their action, Jacob cursed the anger of Levi and Simeon. Jacob said he would divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. The Bible does not give us context about what provoked Levi and Simeon to attack the men of Shechem outside of them defiling their sister. In the Testament of Levi, Levi explains to his children why they attacked the men of Shechem concerning Dina. The Most High told Levi to attack Shechem via the angel of the Lord who spoke with Levi. The angel of the Lord. I wonder what angel that was. I know which angel it was, but I will let you figure it out. The angel of the Lord opened the gates to Levi. There's only one angel with the keys and the gate opens only to him, according to the book of Baruch. The angel of the Lord gave Levi a sword and a shield and said, execute vengeance on the men of Shechem. And thereupon the angel opened to me the gates of heaven, and I saw the holy temple, and upon a throne of glory, the Most High. Then the angel brought me down to the earth, and gave me a shield and a sword, and said to me, Execute vengeance on Shechem because of Dina, thy sister, and I will be with thee because the Lord has sent me. The men of Shechem plan to do to Sarah and Rebekah what they have done to Dina. The testament of Levi said that they mistreated Abraham when he was a stranger in their land. The wrath of Simeon and Levi against those men was judgment from the Most High to that city. But I saw that the sentence of God was for evil upon Shechem, for they sought to do to Sarah and Rebekah as they had done to Dina, our sister. But the Lord prevented them. And they persecuted Abraham, our father, when he was a stranger, and they vexed his flocks when they were big with young. And Eblin, who was born in his house, they most shamefully handled. And thus they did to all strangers, taking away their wives by force, and they banished them. But the wrath of the Lord came upon them to the uttermost. And I said to my father Jacob, By thee will the Lord despoil the Canaanites and will give their land to thee and to thy seed after thee. Levi revealed that because they attacked the men of Shechem against the will of Jacob, that is how they sinned. And Jacob was sick at the time of the attack. That is why he cursed their anger and was wroth with them. And I slew Shechem first, and Simeon slew Hamar. And after this, my brothers came and smote that city with the edge of the sword. And my father heard these things and was wroth. And he was grieved in that they had received the circumcision and after that had been put to death. And in his blessings, he looked amiss upon us. For we sinned because we had done this thing against his will and he was sick on that day. The tribe of Levi was indeed scattered among Israel, just like Jacob prophesied. 
The southern kingdom of Judah consists of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. Because the Most High gave Levi the priesthood, the Levites who were responsible to take care of the temple of the Most High, as well as the priests in Levi's tribe, live in Jerusalem. Not all of the Levites live in the kingdom of Judah. Remember, Levi was to receive cities to live among his brethren. The Most High did not give the Levites an inheritance. The Most High took the Levites for himself as an inheritance. But unto the tribe of Levi, Moses gave not any inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance, as he said unto them, The priests, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and his inheritance. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance, as he hath said unto them. Wherefore Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance, according as the Lord thy God promised him. Later on in this message, you will know what are the promises the Most High made to Levi. The tribe of Levi live amongst all the tribes, in the cities and suburbs given to them. Command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in. And ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. And the cities shall they have to dwell in. And the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle and for their goods and for all their beasts. And the suburbs of the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about. The scripture said the Israelites had to give the Levites cities and suburbs to live in. Amongst every tribe the Levites dwell, just as Jacob prophesied that the Levites would be scattered among the Israelites. Israelites, you need to understand the difference between the 12 tribes and the 12 patriarch of the Israelite nation. The 12 patriarch are the sons of Jacob. Jacob's sons are Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Usher, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin. The 12 tribes of Israel are Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Usher, Issachar, Zebulon, Benjamin, Manasseh, and Ephraim. Did you notice in the 12 tribes, Joseph and Levi are missing. The Most High took Levi, as you heard in the scriptures, as his inheritance. Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, replaced Joseph and Levi. If you include the tribe of Levi into the Israelite nation, then the nation of Israel consists of 13 tribes. Jacob brought Manasseh and Ephraim, his grandsons, into the 12 tribes of Israel. When Jacob was blessing his sons, he didn't mention Manasseh and Ephraim in the chapter 49 of the book of Genesis. The workers of iniquity placed the blessings Jacob had for Manasseh and Ephraim in chapter 48 of the book of Genesis. Jacob took Manasseh and Ephraim and claimed them as his children. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. And thy issue which thou begettest after them shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. To those of you who descend from the tribe of Levi, do not fear. You're Israelites in a tribe. Your blessings from the Most High is amazing among the nation of Israel. Levi is first and Judah is second. The Testament of Judah revealed this information. Judah command his children not to hate Levi. And now, my children, I command you, love Levi, that you may abide and exalt not yourself against him, lest ye be utterly destroyed. For to me the Lord gave the kingdom, and to him the priesthood, and he set the kingdom beneath the priesthood. To me he gave the things upon the earth, 
to him the things in the heavens. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so is the priesthood of God higher than the earthly kingdom, unless it falls away through sin from the Lord and is dominated by the earthly kingdom. For the angel of the Lord said unto me, The Lord chose him rather than thee to draw near to him and to eat of his table and to offer him the first fruits of the choice things of the sons of Israel. But thou shalt be king of Jacob. To the tribe of Levi, listen to what your father Levi revealed to his children and descendants before he transitioned to the afterlife. When Levi gathered his children to him, he was not sick. It was told to Levi that he would die. Therefore, he gathered his children to him to instruct them of what they should do, as well as prophesy to his descendants of what would happen to them. The copy of the word of Levi, the things which he ordained unto his sons, according to all that they should do, and what things should befall them until the day of judgment. He was sound in health when he called them to him, for it had been revealed to him that he should die. The testament of Levi revealed that Levi was a dreamer and a prophet. The Most High said, if there be a prophet among you, he will make himself known to him in a dream. The Bible do not reveal that Levi was taken to the heavens. Levi grieved for mankind that he prayed that he might be saved. After his prayer, Levi fell asleep and he dreamed. In the spirit realm, he dreamed he saw a high mountain and he was on the mountain. The heavens opened to him and an angel of the Most High told him to enter. And I was grieving for the race of the sons of men, and I prayed to the Lord that I might be saved. Then there fell upon me a sleep, and I beheld a high mountain, and I was upon it. And behold, the heavens were opened, and an angel of God said to me, Levi, enter. Israelites, I talk a lot about the spirit realm on this channel. The spirit realm is very real. The Most High speak with his people in the spirit realm. The book of Job confirm. I've also revealed to you that most of the scriptures are dreams and visions seen by the prophets who have written them down. Israelites, do not ignore your dream life. The revelations received in the spirit realm are important. The Most High spoke to Levi in the spirit realm, the dream world. The angel of the Most High took Levi to the presence of the Most High. And when thou hast ascended thither, thou shalt stand near the Lord, and shalt be his ministers, and shalt declare his mysteries to men, and shalt proclaim concerning him that shall redeem Israel. And by thee and Judah shall the Lord appear among men, saving every race of men. It was revealed to Levi his destiny in the spirit realm. Levi seen the heavens open before he ascended to the presence of the Most High. The angel that was with Levi said, The Most High have heard his prayers to separate him from the iniquity of men. If you're righteous, your prayers are heard. If sin is found in you, your prayers are not heard. Because of Levi's desire to separate himself from the iniquity of men, the Most High said he will be a son to the Most High, a servant and a minister of his presence. Therefore, the Most High had heard thy prayer to separate thee from iniquity, and thou, thou shouldest become to him a son and a servant and a minister of his presence. The angel opened the gate and brought Levi into the presence of the glory of the Most High. The angel went on to explain to Levi that he has given him the blessings of the priesthood until he comes to sojourn in the midst of Israel. And thereupon the angel opened to me the gates of heaven, and I saw the holy temple, and upon a throne of glory the Most High. And he said to me, Levi, I have given thee the blessings of the priesthood until I come and sojourn in the midst of Israel. The angel took Levi back to the earth, and Levi asked the angel his name. Like in everything, the synagogue of Satan did not reveal the name. The angel identified himself as the one who intercede for the nation of Israel. The scripture said the Messiah intercede on our behalf as well. And I said to him, I pray thee, O Lord, tell me thy name, that I may call upon thee in the day of tribulation. And he said, I am the angel who intercede for the nation of Israel, that they may not be smitten utterly, for every evil spirit attacketh. 
And after these things, I awake and bless the Most High and the angel who interceded for the nation of Israel and for all the righteous. The Testament of Levi identify an angel who intercedes on the behalf of the nation of Israel and all the righteous, just like the Messiah. Interesting. Levi revealed to Jacob that the Most High would give him the land of the Canaanites to him and his seed, the same everlasting covenant the Most High made to Abraham. Levi revealed to his children that he saw seven men in white saying to him to get up and put on the robe of the priesthood and the crown of righteousness. And I saw seven men in white raiment saying unto me, Arise, put on the robe of the priesthood and the crown of righteousness and the breastplate of understanding and the garment of truth and the late of faith and the turban of the head and the ephod of prophecy. And they severely carried these things and put them on me and said unto me, From henceforth become a priest of the Lord, thou and thy seed forever. Israelites, like Levi, it is the Most High that will tell you your destiny and purpose on this earth. It is the Most High that will reveal to you your tribe. The Bible doesn't mention the sanctification process Levi went through before he could wear the robe of the priesthood. I encourage you to read the Testament of Levi to know about the process. The man in white robe said to Levi that his tribe would be divided into three offices for a sign for the glory of the one who is to come. And they said to me, Levi, thy seed shall be divided into three offices for a sign of the glory of the Lord who is to come. And the first portion shall be great, yea, greater than it shall none be. The second shall be in the priesthood, and the third shall be called by a new name, because a king shall arise in Judah and shall establish a new priesthood after the fashion of the Gentiles. The seven men in white said to Levi that his seed would be priests, judges, and scribes. The scriptures went on to say by their mouths, the holy place would be guarded. The seven men in white Levi saw were speaking to Levi in the spirit realm his dream. The seven men in white robes was the second dream Levi had confirming his destiny as priest. And some of them shall be high priests and judges and scribes, for by their mouths shall the holy place be guarded. And when I awoke, I understood that this dream was like the first dream, and I hid this also in my heart and told it not to any man upon the earth. Isaac continued to call Levi to remind him of the laws of the Most High. Isaac taught Levi the law of the priesthood of sacrifices, burnt offering, and first fruits. Isaac also warned Levi about the spirit of fornication. Isaac revealed that by the spirit of fornication, his seed will pollute the holy place. And Isaac called me continually to put me in remembrance of the law of the Lord, even as the angel of the Lord showed unto me. And he taught me the law of the priesthood of sacrifices, whole burnt offerings, first fruits, free will offerings, peace offerings. And each day he was instructing me and was busied on my behalf before the Lord and said to me, Beware of the spirit of fornication, for this shall continue and shall by thy seed pollute the holy place. I don't know how many times in the beast system a pastor is caught with his pants down. The heathens would send their missionaries to do the Most High's work in different countries. Most of them are caught in scandals of abusing the women and children in the foreign countries. Levi taught his children everything he learned from his fathers. Levi said to his children that he taught them the statutes so that he is clear from the ungodliness and transgression the tribe of Levi will commit in the end times against the Most High. The Levites will deceive the Israelites in stirring up a great evil from the Most High. And behold, I am clear from your ungodliness and transgressions, which ye shall commit in the end of the ages against the Savior of the world, Christ, acting godlessly, deceiving Israel, and stirring up against it great evils from the Lord. And ye shall deal lawlessly together with Israel, so he shall not bear with Jerusalem because of your wickedness. But the veil of the temple shall be rent, so as not to cover your shame. 
Levi revealed to his children that they would be scattered as captives among the Gentiles. There would be a reproach and for a curse. And ye shall be scattered as captives among the Gentiles and shall be for a reproach and for a curse there. The testament of Levi revealed that the tribe of Levi would be scattered among the Gentiles. Not everyone who are descendants of slaves are of the tribe of Judah. Levi is also scattered when they polluted the sanctuary of the Most High and they were sent into captivity. Remember, the Levites were already scattered among the Israelites. There is a remnant of Levites living among the Gentiles according to the testament of Levi. The Levites are being scorned in the beast system. Therefore, my children, I have learned that at the end of the ages, you will transgress against the Lord, stretching out hands to wickedness against him, and to all the Gentiles shall you become a scorn. Judah and Levi have something in common. Both were sent into captivity and being disrespected and mistreated in the land of their captivity. Levi said that the Levites will bring a curse to our nation because they will teach commandments that are contrary to the ordinance of the Most High. The Levites will rob the offering of the Most High and will spend it on harlots. Yea, ye shall bring a curse upon our race, because the light of the law which was given for the lightning every man, this ye desire to destroy by teaching commandments contrary to the ordinance of God. The offering of the Lord ye shall rob, and from his portion shall ye steal choice portions, eating them contemptuously with harlots. The testament of Levi said the Levites would defile the women of Israel. The Levites would take the Gentiles for wife and will purify these strange women with unlawful purification. Levi said his descendants union with the Gentile women would be like Sodom and Gomorrah. And out of covetousness, ye shall teach the commandments of the Lord. Wedded women shall ye pollute, and the virgins of Jerusalem shall ye defile, and with harlots and adulteresses shall ye be joined, and the daughters of the Gentiles shall ye take to wife, purifying them with an unlawful purification, and your union shall be like unto Sodom and Gomorrah. I can't help but to link the transgressions of the Levites who took strange women for wives and defiling the daughters of Zion with the many sons of Israel today, pushing the doctrines you are what your father is. They teach that the strange women can produce Israelite children. They give these women who are not daughters of Zion, the title daughter of Zion to marry these heathen women. Some Israelites are listing the heathens as Israelites in the 12 tribe chart to overrule the Most High's commandment about the strange women and men. My question to the sons of Israel, if the women you choose for wives can be from any nation, who are the strange women the Most High warn you about? Some of you who teach and stand by these doctrines need to reevaluate your tribe. Some of you claim Judah, but you may be Levi. Levi said to his children that they will become prideful because of the priesthood. And ye shall be puffed up because of your priesthood, lifting yourselves up against men, and not only so, but also against the commands of God. Due to the iniquity of the Levites in the holy place, the temple of the Most High will be destroyed and the Levites will be captives throughout all the nations. Therefore, the temple which the Lord shall choose shall be laid waste through your uncleanness and you shall be captives throughout all nations. Levi said to his children, all of their enemies who hate them will rejoice at their destruction. Levi said if they didn't receive mercy through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, no Levite would be left on the face of this earth. And if you were not to receive mercy through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our fathers, not one of our seed should be left upon the earth. The testament of Levi said that the Levites will make void the laws of the Most High. They will persecute the righteous men and hate the godly. Anyone who tried to restore the word of the Most High, the Levites would call a deceiver. They would try to kill that person. And ye shall persecute righteous men and hate the godly. The words of the faithful shall ye abhor. And a man who renew the law in the power of the Most High, ye shall call a deceiver. And at last ye shall rush upon him to slay him, not knowing his dignity, taking innocent blood through wickedness upon your heads. 
Levi said to his children, they will have no place that is clean. The Levites will be among the Gentiles as a curse. Their land and substance shall be destroyed. Levi talked about the coming of the Messiah. Levi said that in the Messiah's priesthood, the Gentiles will gain knowledge upon the earth. The Messiah will open the gate of paradise and remove the threatening sword against Adam. The Messiah shall give the righteous to eat from the tree of life. And in his priesthood, the Gentiles shall be multiplied in knowledge upon the earth and enlightened through the grace of the Lord. In his priesthood shall sin come to an end and the lawless shall cease to do evil. And he shall open the gates of paradise and shall remove the threatening sword against Adam. And he shall give to the saints to eat from the tree of life and the spirit of holiness shall be on them. A lot of Israelites in the awakening need to go before the Most High and ask him to reveal their tribe. After reading the Testament of Levi, a lot of people who claim Judah may be Levi. The difference between Levi and Judah, Judah is a warrior. If the spirit of fear run your life, are you sure you're a warrior? Levi said to his children to make a choice. It's either light or the darkness. It's either the law of the Most High or the works of the Satans. Levi was 137 years old when he died. And thus Levi ceased commanding his sons and he stretched out his feet on the bed and was gathered to his fathers after he had lived 137 years. Israelites, I encourage you to read the Testaments of the Patriarch. There is hidden truth in them. For those who desire to know your tribe, first ask the Most High. Do not stress about your tribe. In due time, the Most High will reveal it to you. If the characteristics of the tribe of Levi is telling your story and the Holy Spirit is nudging at your heart, this may be the confirmation you needed to determine if you descend from the tribe of Levi. Every tribe has its good and bad. That is why we must repent so that we do not repeat the sins of our fathers. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, where are they, and the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. A lot of Israelites want to accept the blessings and the many promises the Most High made to our people. We have to come to the realization that we are in the land of our captivity due to iniquity. Our fathers learn from their mistakes. Before they transition, they command their children to serve the Most High. The awakening is here so that we can repent and serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. We must humble ourselves to receive mercy just like our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob received from the Most High. As our knowledge increase, do not let the spirit of pride take over you. Israelites, repent, for the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. But Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day.
All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Every one, according to his blessing, he blessed them. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite for a possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Before the Most High made the tribe of Judah the leaders and kings in Jacob, the tribe of Benjamin was the first leaders of the Israelite nation. Our nation's first king came from the tribe of Benjamin. The Most High took the kingship and leadership from the tribe of Benjamin and gave the kingdom to Judah during the reign of our nation's first king, Saul. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thy own sight, Wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, the Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. The tribe of Benjamin was set up to rule and be great amongst their brethren. Due to their iniquity, the crown and leadership was removed from Benjamin and given to Judah. There was a great war between the house of King Saul and the house of David. The house of King Saul lost the war, and the Most High transferred the kingdom to Judah. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. So do God to Abner, and more also, except as the Lord hath sworn to David, even so I do to him, to translate the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. Then all Israel gathered themselves to David unto Hebron, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. And moreover, in time past, even when Saul was king, thou wast he that leddest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord thy God said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be ruler over my people Israel. Therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king to Hebron, and David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. The downfall of Benjamin gave Judah the kingdom. The Israelites didn't reject Saul from being king. The Israelites followed King Saul. King Saul was the king the Israelites wanted so they could be like the heathen nations. It was the Most High that rejected Saul from being king over Israel. Due to his multitude of iniquity, when King Saul was rejected as king, the tribe of Benjamin was also rejected as the leaders of the Israelite nation. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. In the Testaments of Judah, Judah said he obtained the kingdom due to his obedience to his father and mother. Before we get into the Testaments of Benjamin, the Bible has given us a lot of information about the tribe of Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin had a chapter in the tale series on this channel, as well as the tribe of Levi. 
Because the southern kingdom of Judah consists of Judah and Benjamin and a remnant of Levites, Benjamin is the third chapter in the 12 tribe series. Benjamin is the youngest son born to Jacob. Rachel is Benjamin's mother. Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, or she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. Rachel named her son Benoni. Jacob changed his name and called his name Benjamin. Benoni means son of my sorrow and pain. The name Benjamin means son of my right hand. Jacob changed his son name from being a son of sorrow and pain to a son of my right hand. Let us hear what Jacob prophesied to his son Benjamin before he transitioned to the afterlife. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. What did Jacob meant when he said Benjamin shall raven as a wolf? In the testament of Benjamin, Benjamin said to his children that if they obey the Most High, if they walk in the holiness according to the commandments of the Most High, his children would dwell with him in the coming kingdom. Benjamin said to his children that he will no longer be called a ravening wolf due to the tribe of Benjamin's ravages. If ye therefore, my children, walk in holiness according to the commandments of the Lord, ye shall again dwell securely with me, and all Israel shall be gathered unto the Lord. And I shall no longer be called a ravening wolf on account of your ravages, but a worker of the Lord distributing food to them that work what is good. One of the fruits the tribe of Benjamin produce is that they are like a raven wolf. Have you ever seen a pack of wolves attack their prey? A pack of wolves are extremely violent. Oftentimes, wolves will eat their prey alive. Wolves will eat nearly anything to stay alive. Knowing the characteristics of a wolf can help identify the tribe of Benjamin. Wolves work together to take down their prey. A pack of wolves consists of a family unit. Raven means violent seizure of prey or property. Raven can also mean plunder. Jacob described his son as a raven wolf. One of the characteristics of the tribe of Benjamin is that they would be violent. In other words, savages. The scripture said, you will know a person by their fruits. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. The behavior of a person reveal more than the words they speak. Benjamin did not want to be known as a ravening wolf on the account of his tribe's ravages. The scriptures in the Bible give us a detailed account of the tribe of Benjamin's savagery. Like a wolf pack, a group of males from the tribe of Benjamin brutally attacked the wife of a Levite man, a daughter of Zion. The scripture said they violently assaulted her and tortured her all night that she succumbed to her injuries. After they violently abused her, they let her go. When she made it back to the house where she was staying, she died at the door. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was. Till it was light and her lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way and behold the woman his concubine was fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold and he said unto her up and let us be going but none answered then the man took her up upon an ass and the man rose up and got him unto his place the scriptures are correct when it said, you will know a person by their fruits. 
The act of violence towards the wife or concubine of the Levite was a testimony to the tribe of Benjamin from the words Jacob spoke to Benjamin concerning his tribe. The men did exactly what the scriptures prophesied they would do. They act like ravaging wolves. The scriptures in the Bible give us a detailed account of the tribe of Benjamin's ravaging ways. A daughter of Zion whom they killed due to their lustful perversion. Later on in this message, you will know about the tribe of Benjamin's perversions. When the Levite and his wife came to a city that belonged to the tribe of Benjamin, nobody received them. A man from the tribe of Ephraim dwell in the city that belonged to the tribe of Benjamin offered the Levite a place to stay. And he said unto his servant, Come, and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed on and went their way. And the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat him down in a street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodging. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field of even, which was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou? And whence comest thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem Judah toward the side of Mount Ephraim. From thence am I. And I went to Bethlehem Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord, and there is no man that receiveth me to house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me, and for thy handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. Howsoever let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. Due to the iniquity of the group of men towards the daughter of Zion and the tribe of Benjamin, savage ways, the entire tribe of Benjamin was judged by the Most High. The reason the tribe of Benjamin was judged harshly, when the elders and leaders of the Israelite nation wanted to find those men who killed the daughter of Zion to bring them to justice, nobody from the tribe of Benjamin would reveal the identity of the men who committed the crime against the daughter of Zion. Because the members of the tribe of Benjamin refused to reveal the identity of the men who committed the crime, the entire tribe was guilty. Instead of turning in those men, the tribe of Benjamin protected the criminals and gathered themselves to fight against their own people. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness is this that is done among you? Now therefore, deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. The apple never far, far from the tree. I notice in this generation an increase of people not interfering when they see wrongdoing. Some people walk away and pretend they don't see, while others enjoy the violence by recording the act and spreading it across social media for entertainment. The ravaging ways of the tribe of Benjamin remind me of the recent story of the Cabo Six. These individuals brutally beat their so-called friend that ended the life of the young woman. I have heard a lot of Israelites and indigenous black males say if the crime is not committed against a member of their family, they will not intervene. Some express their fear of being put to death for intervening. There are some Israelite women and indigenous black women that will hide a criminal. If you possess these characteristics, the tribe of Benjamin may be your tribe. Remember, our nation is not in captivity due to keeping the laws. We are in captivity because of the multitude of sin against our nation. Every tribe has its good and bad. Every tribe was sent into captivity due to iniquity. The Most High removed his people from his presence because of their wicked ways. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. 
When I say examine yourself and don't deny what you discover, the truth you discover about yourself is being revealed for you to repent. The tribe of Benjamin are the creators of the no snitching policy. They remained silent and protected the criminals. Israelites, you have to be careful on participating in other people's sins. Do not be partakers with them or you will be judged with them. The Most High destroyed the tribe of Benjamin for their iniquity. The Most High sent Judah to destroy the tribe of Benjamin first in the civil war in our nation. And the men of Israel beside Benjamin were numbered 400,000 men that drew sword. All these were men of war. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. The war between the 11 tribes against Benjamin was intense. The first two days of battle, the tribe of Benjamin won. The Benjamites successfully beat the other tribes. The tribe of Benjamin had fierce fighters. They fought as a team, just like a pack of wolves. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the cities, 20 and 6,000 men that drew sword beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered 700 chosen men. Among all this people, there were 700 chosen men left-handed. Everyone could sling stones at an hairbreadth and not miss. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day, 20 and 2,000 men. And the children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again 18,000 men. All these drew the sword. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. The success of the Benjamites did not last long. On the third day of battle, the Most High destroyed the tribe of Benjamin. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? Or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. And there came against Gibeah ten thousand chosen men out of all Israel. And the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel. And the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites that day twenty and five thousand and an hundred men. All these drew the sword. And the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword as well the men of every city as the beast and all that came to hand. Also, they set on fire all the cities that they came to. After the brutal civil war within the Israelite nation, the elders and leaders from the 11 tribes made a covenant not to give their daughters for wives to the surviving sons of Benjamin. The Israelites believed the tribe of Benjamin was cut off after the war. Many of them repented for Benjamin. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpeh, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife. And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin their brother and said, there is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them of our daughters to wives? That is how Benjamin became the smallest tribe out of the Israelite nation. The tribe of Benjamin was almost genocide when the Most High judged the Benjamites for their violence against the daughter of Zion, as well as the other members of the tribe of Benjamin refusing to comply. Instead, they wage war with their people. When Samuel saw Saul and revealed to Saul that he would be king of Israel, 
Saul responded by saying he comes from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in our nation. Saul went on to say his family is the smallest in the tribe of Benjamin. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? The tribe of Benjamin's iniquity caused them to be utterly destroyed. The Benjamites remained the smallest of all the tribes. The leaders during the generation of war against the tribe of Benjamin decided to slew the men and women from the camp of Jabesh Gilead for not appearing in Mizpah to the Most High. They preserved 400 women who were virgins from Jabesh Gilead for wives for the surviving males from the tribe of Benjamin. And the congregation sent thither 12,000 men of the valiantest and commanded them saying, Go and smite the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead with the edge of the sword, with the women and the children. And this is the thing that ye shall do. Ye shall utterly destroy every male and every woman that hath lain by man. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead four hundred young virgins that had known no man by lying with any male. And they brought them unto the camp to Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. And the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock Ramon, and to call peaceably unto them. And Benjamin came again at that time, and they gave them wives which they had saved alive of the women of Jabesh Gilead, and yet so they sufficed them not. And the people repented them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. The tribe of Benjamin was repopulated with 400 virgins from Jabesh Gilead. Also, the Most High used the daughters from Shiloh to help rebuild the tribe of Benjamin. If the daughters of Shiloh came out to dance during the Feast of the Lord, then the men of Benjamin who escaped could take from the daughters of Shiloh for a wife. The scripture said all the women of Benjamin were destroyed from the civil war. Then the elders of the congregation said, How shall we do for wives for them? that remain, seeing the women are destroyed out of Benjamin. And they said, There must be an inheritance for them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Howbeit we may not give them wives of our daughters, for the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh yearly in a place, which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shechem, and on the south of Lebanon. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go, and lie in wait in the vineyards, and see, and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, then come ye out of the vineyards, and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. To the daughters of Zion, let what happened to the women of Benjamin open your eyes. I hope you will make better decisions on whom you choose for a husband. Do not conspire together with wicked men. Do not provide a safe place for criminals. All of the women of Benjamin were killed while some of the sons of Benjamin survived after the war. In the Testament of Benjamin, Benjamin said to his children that their downfall will come from the spirit of fornication. Due to this iniquity, his children shall perish. Only a few will be saved. The spirit of fornication that would plague the Benjamites is the spirit of fornication of Sodom. Benjamin said his children shall renew wanton deeds with women. Wanton means deliberate and unprovoked. Wanton is also a person who is sexually unrestrained. Benjamin said the kingdom of the Most High will not be among the Benjamites. And I believe that there will be also evil doings among you from the words of Enoch the righteous, that ye shall commit fornication with the fornication of Sodom and shall perish, all save a few, and shall renew wanton deeds with women. And the kingdom of the Lord shall not be among you, for straightway he shall take it away. By now, everyone should know about the two cities the Most High destroyed called Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah is known for their sexual perversions. Benjamin said his children will fall by the spirit of fornication of Sodom. 
the book of Jude in the Bible said the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah gave themselves up to fornication and going after strange flesh. Because of their lewdness, those cities suffered from the judgment of eternal fire. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What does the Bible mean when it says strange flesh? Strange flesh is the act of homosexuality. We have seen the rise of homosexuality in this generation. The Marine Kingdom is destroying many with the spirit of sexual perversion. Marine spirits or water spirits are behind every sexual sin. The Testament of Benjamin reveal the tribe of Benjamin will fall by this abomination. The alphabet community is increasing in the indigenous black community. When the Most High sent his angels to save Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels were solicited by a group of men from Sodom who wanted to sleep with them. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. The Most High had no mercy for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Once the Most High saved Lot and his family from those cities, the Most High burned down Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Everyone in this generation associates sodomy with homosexuality. Sodomy also means anal and oral sexual relations. Everyone who are participating in these acts are committing the sin of fornication of sodomy. Benjamin said to his children, they will fall by that spirit. The account the Bible gave us about the men of Sodom wanting to sleep with the angels that came to rescue Lot is very similar with the story of the men of Benjamin who brutally assaulted the Levite's wife. The men of Benjamin did not want to be with the daughter of Zion. They wanted to be with the Levite. Like the men of Sodom, the Benjamites came to the house where the Levite and his wife were staying, asking for the Levite so they can be with him. The men from Ephraim who lived in the Benjamite city, housing the Levite and his wife, rejected their offers. The old man offered his daughter and the Levite's wife. In order to save himself, the Levite offered his wife. That is how the daughter of Zion was assaulted and killed. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door. And spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them, and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is come into mine house, do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now. And humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. The story of the angels in Sodom and the Benjamites are parallel to each other. 
The Most High did to the tribe of Benjamin like he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. We are living in a generation where sexual perversion is at an all-time high. Many people are exploiting their bodies in these last days. The workers of iniquity who run this world with the Satans are deep into sodomy. They have created an environment in the beast system for people to experiment with their bodies in ways the Most High deem abominable. The workers of iniquity have laws encouraging the people to give into their lusts. The tribe of Benjamin, as well as many other tribes, have fallen victim to the spirit of fornication in a form of sodomy. Marine spirits are behind every sexual perversion. Benjamin revealed his tribe would fall into the perversion of sodomy. There are a lot of men in this generation that hate women. Social media is home to many of those males that display their hatred. Behind closed doors, those men are into what the Bible calls strange flesh. The indigenous black community has a high population of DL males. The Most High said, your body is the temple that housed the spirit of the Most High. Will you join the temple of the Most High with harlots and in homosexuality? The scripture said every sin a person commits is outside the body. However, the sin of fornication is against your own body. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If the characteristics of the tribe of Benjamin match your character, there's a strong possibility that the tribe of Benjamin is your tribe. Benjamin said to his children on his deathbed to keep the laws and commandments of the Most High. Benjamin said to his descendants, the laws and commandments I leave you instead of an inheritance. Do ye, therefore, truth each one to his neighbor, and keep the law of the Lord and his commandments. For these things do I leave you instead of inheritance. Benjamin said to his children that his tribe would be redeemed when the Messiah comes and the Israelite nation is saved. The Testament of Benjamin talks about Joseph, Benjamin's full brother. Benjamin longed to see his brother. The Most High allowed him to see his brother Joseph through Jacob's prayer before they went to Egypt. Benjamin talked about the Messiah as well. Benjamin said to his children, there is one coming from the tribe of Judah and Levi. And there shall arise in the latter days, one beloved of the Lord, of the tribe of Judah and Levi, a doer of his good pleasure in his mouth, with new knowledge enlightening the Gentiles. Benjamin and Judah have a long history together. When Jacob sent his sons, excluding Benjamin, to buy food in Egypt, there was a famine in the land of Canaan at that time. Joseph, who was already in Egypt, requests that they come back to Egypt with Benjamin. Judah promised Jacob that he would guard Benjamin with his life. And Judah said unto Israel, his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou and also our little ones. I will be surety for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee, and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame for ever. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me, lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father? The covenant Judah made with Jacob concerning Benjamin remain until the Most High remove his people from his presence. David and Jonathan reestablished the covenant when Jonathan, who is from the tribe of Benjamin, also the son of King Saul, asked David to look after his house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And thou shalt not only while yet I live show me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not. But also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house for ever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. 
So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. When the Most High divided our nation into two kingdoms, the Most High honored those covenants and gave to Judah one tribe. The tribe of Benjamin was the tribe the Most High gave to Judah. The rest of the ten tribes did not follow Judah. Albeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, an hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. The southern kingdom of Judah consists of Benjamin and Judah. Only a remnant of the Levites live in the southern kingdom of Judah. The Levites live among all the tribes. In addition, Levi is not considered a tribe in our nation. Our nation remained divided until the Most High bring his people together again. When the Most High removed his people from his presence, only Judah remained after the Assyrian captivity of the northern kingdom. The scripture said in the book of Kings that only the tribe of Judah remained in Jerusalem. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam which he did. They departed not from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight as he had said by all his servants the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. The testament of Benjamin does not reveal if the tribe of Benjamin went into captivity with Judah. Benjamin commanded his children to love their neighbor, keep the commandments and laws of the Most High. Benjamin did not prophesy about the whereabout of his tribe in the last days. If Judah is the only tribe that remained after the northern kingdom was exiled, this would mean the tribe of Benjamin was also taken with the northern kingdom. Remember, the tribe of Benjamin is the smallest among the 12 tribes of Israel. The scriptures reveal Judah was the only tribe that remained until the tribe of Judah was dispersed to the four corners of this world. The Testament of Judah, Judah revealed that his descendants would go into captivity and live among the Gentiles. Judah did not mention Benjamin being with his tribe. For which things... Saith the Lord shall bring upon you famine and pestilence, death and the sword, beleaguering by enemies and revilings of friends, the slaughter of children, the rape of wives, the plundering of possessions, the burning of the temple of God, the laying waste of the land, the enslavement of yourselves among the Gentiles. Until the Lord visit you, when with perfect heart ye repent and walk in all of his commandments, and he bring you up from captivity among the Gentiles. And after these things shall a star rise to you from Jacob in peace. The northern kingdom of Israel went into the Assyrian captivity. As for the Levites, because they dwell among all the tribes, and Levi testified that his tribe would be a curse among the Gentiles, the diaspora consists of a remnant of the Levites and Judah. I believe the tribe of Benjamin are captives with the northern kingdom. The second book of Asterisk revealed that the northern kingdom decided that they would travel to a place where they could worship the Most High and keep his statutes and commandments in peace. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osi, the king, whom Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, and go forth into a further country, where never mankind dwelt. Through the transatlantic slave trade, 
Many Israelites were dispersed into all the kingdoms of this world. In addition to being dispersed, presently, many Israelites migrate to other nations freely. The Israelites are living among the Gentiles all over the world. The only way to know what tribe you descend from, the Most High has to reveal it to you. The prophecies concerning each tribe by the sons of Jacob could help those who desire to know their tribe. Benjamin was 125 years old when he transitioned to the afterlife. And the number of the days of his life was 125 years. Before I started to read the testaments of the 12 patriarch, I believed most of the Israelites in the diaspora were of the tribe of Judah. After reading the testaments and hearing what the sons of Jacob prophesied about their children in the last days has helped me understand the character of the indigenous black people. A good example is the Cabo Six. Before the Most High increased my knowledge about the characteristics of the tribes, I would assume the people involved in the Cabo Six scandal are of Judah. Their behavior revealed to me that Benjamin may be their tribe. They display the same ravaging ways of the tribe of Benjamin. A person can speak lies to you, but a person's behavior can reveal so much more. Like I said before, every tribe has its good and bad. Everyone have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Most High. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not everyone in the tribe of Benjamin is into sodomy. Not every Benjamite is like a raven wolf. Just like in the tribe of Judah, not everyone are drunkards and harlots. Not everyone in the tribe of Levi loves the strange women and men. These are some of the characteristics that stands out in those tribes. Our nation is not without sin. In the Testament of Benjamin, Benjamin said that our nation would be judged first, confirming what the scripture said in the Bible that judgment starts with the Israelites. But the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? The Most High has shown that he will use anyone to do his will. If your heart is pure before the Most High, He can use you to do His will. The Most High indeed used the tribe of Benjamin to reach the righteous Gentiles. Benjamin said to his children that in them, the prophecy of the Messiah will be known. Indeed, the Most High used Paul in the New Testament from the tribe of Benjamin to teach the Gentiles and Israelites about the Messiah and the kingdom of the Most High. And these shall be fulfilled the prophecy of heaven concerning the Lamb of God and Savior of the world, and that a blameless one shall be delivered up for lawless men, and a sinless one shall die for ungodly men in the blood of the covenant, for the salvation of the Gentiles and of Israel, and shall destroy Belair and his servants. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Israelites, as we continue to uncover truth in the testaments of the patriarch, I hope the truth discovered in the scriptures is leading everyone into repentance. I hope every Israelite can understand there is a need for all Israelites, regardless of your tribe, must repent. In addition, the awakening is about repentance, not so much on what tribe is the most significant. When the disciples asked the Messiah who would be the greatest in the kingdom, the Messiah said, if you humble yourself like a little child, you would be the greatest in the kingdom. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called the little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Your tribe doesn't determine your salvation. Repentance does. As our knowledge increase and history is correcting itself, do not let the spirit of pride put you at risk to miss the coming kingdom. Israelites, repent morning, day, and night. Do not let the sun go down and not repent. Israelites, continue to seek the face of the Most High so that He can order your steps. Blessed be the Lord, because He hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him.
I'm helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also, and lift them up forever. We looked for peace, but no good came, and for a time of health, and behold, trouble. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones. But they are come and have devoured the land, and all that is in it, the city, and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices, among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. Every tribe has its purpose in our nation. Although the scriptures has placed a spotlight on certain tribes, all of the 12 tribes of Israel are important and have a purpose in the nation of Israel. I believe the highlighted tribes overshadowed the other tribes because of the role and inheritance given to each tribe. For example, the tribe of Judah was given the kingdom. The Satans have to highlight the tribe of Judah to better deceive the whole world. How else can the workers of iniquity pass off the false Messiah and the Jewish people if the tribe of Judah is not the focus point in the beast system? The scriptures made it very clear that Satan has deceived the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Deception is the fuel that operates the kingdom of darkness. The tribe of Dan is one of the tribes that is overshadowed in the history of the Israelite bloodline. Although the scriptures do not give us a lot of information about the tribe of Dan, the Danites contribute to our nation before they went missing, according to the beast system scholars and Israelite teachers in the awakening. Israelites, you have to understand, just because we don't know where the tribe of Dan is today, it doesn't mean the Most High has forgotten about the tribe of Dan or they were cut off. Remember, the Most High is merciful. The Most High gave his people the opportunity to repent. The Most High gave the tribe of Dan the opportunity to repent as well. The tribes may be lost in the B system. However, the Most High know exactly where his people are. The scripture said in the book of Psalms that the workers of iniquity have taken crafty counsel against the most high's hidden ones. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. The scriptures made it clear that the most high's chosen people are hidden among the nations. By the way, the heathens know exactly where the 12 tribes are today. The workers of iniquity want to convince the indigenous black people that the tribes are lost to insert themselves into the scriptures, as well as to falsify history to take over the identity of the chosen people. The workers of iniquity condemn the scriptures that expose who they are by not including those scriptures in the Bible. The workers of iniquity claim the scriptures are lost. All along, they have the original scrolls locked away and closely monitored to prevent the manuscripts leaking to the public. The workers of iniquity forgot about the Holy Spirit. Israelites, 
Just because a tribe may appear to be missing, it doesn't mean they were cut off. Dan is the progenitor to the tribe of Dan. The Danites are a nation under the umbrella of the Israelite bloodline. Dan is the son of Jacob and Bilhah. Bilhah was Rachel's handmaid. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Billa his handmaid to be her maid. Naphtali and Dan are full brothers. Their mother Billard was given to Jacob by Rachel when Rachel was barren. Rachel claimed Billard's children for herself. Rachel envied Leah because Leah had six sons and a daughter for Jacob. Leah's handmaid also had children for Jacob. Rachel's jealousy and desperation for children for Jacob led her to give her handmaid to her husband Jacob in order to have children through her. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Rachel claims Bilhah's children as her own. Dan and Naphtali were the sons born to Bilhah by Jacob. And she said, Behold my maid Billah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. Rachel competed with her sister Leah to see who would give Jacob the most children. Dan was the firstborn son to Bilhah. Rachel is the one that named both the Bilhah sons. Rachel named Bilhah firstborn son, Dan. Rachel believed the Most High judged her and heard her voice at the same time. That is why she named him Dan. Dan means God is my judge. And she gave him Billa, her handmaid to wife. And Jacob went in unto her. And Billa conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God hath judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. Bilhah was the wife of Jacob who Reuben, Jacob's firstborn son, slept with. Israelites, you know that the nation of Israel is not without scandals. Before Jacob transitioned to the afterlife, he gathered his children to him to bless them as well as to prophesy to his children about their future in the latter days. Jacob said that Dan would judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Jacob said Dan would be a serpent. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. The scriptures talk excessively about the tribe of Judah and Levi because both tribes lead our nation. Most of us do not know when the Most High used the tribe of Dan to judge his people. Jacob said Dan would judge his people. After Joshua, the son of Nun, died, the Israelites fell into idolatry. The sin of idolatry plagued our nation until this day. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. During that time, the Most High raised judges to deliver his people from their adversaries. The Israelites did not listen to the judges. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord. But they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. The scriptures did say that the chosen people are stiff necked. The Israelites have a tendency of ignoring and dismissing the people the Most High raised to help them. I can see history repeating itself in this generation. That is why I recommend every Israelite to go humbly before the Most High and ask for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. Pride in this generation is leading many Israelites onto the broad road that leads to destruction. Some refuse to hear even when the truth is staring at them. How can you become free if you don't accept truth? 
During the time of the judges, the Most High fulfilled the prophecy that said Dan would judge his people. The most famous Danite in the scriptures is Samson. Everyone have heard of Samson. Most people don't know that Samson was from the tribe of Dan. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan, between Zorah and Eshtaol. Everything written must come to pass. Samson, the Danite, ruled over the Israelites when the Israelites were being persecuted by the Philistines. Samson was a judge in the Israelite nation for 20 years. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. Samson's downfall was of a strange woman called Delilah. The sons of Israel always playing the harlot and losing in the process. After multiple generations of being destroyed by the strange women, they still haven't learned their lesson. Even in this generation, some have created doctrines that give them access to the strange women. The scriptures did say all the sinners among the Israelites would die by the sword. Samson was no different. His fate was sealed when he revealed to the strange woman his secret. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, there hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath shown me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. If the truth of the Most High's words do not cause the Israelites to repent, the fear of the Most High is not in them. The Most High fulfilled Jacob's prophecy of the tribe of Dan judging his people through Samson. Jacob prophesied that Dan would be a serpent. The serpent in the scriptures is associated with the Satan's. It was through a serpent the Satan Gadriel deceived Eve in the garden. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When land was distributed to the Israelites, the Danites were the last tribe to receive land inheritance. We know that the Danites were still among their people when the Israelites inherited the promised land. 
the Danites inherited the land in the east and west of the promised land. Now these are the names of the tribes, from the north end to the coast of the way of Hethlen, as one goeth to Hamath, Hazar Enan, the border of Damascus northward, to the coast of Hamath, for these are his sides east and west, a portion for Dan. The Danites did not like their land inheritance on the coast. The Danites' land inheritance was too small for the tribe of Dan. The Danites decided to find land that was more suitable for them. The Danites sent six spies to scout the city Lashem to try to overtake the city to increase their land. When the Danites conquered the city Lashem, they changed the name of that city to Dan after their father. And the coast of the children of Dan went out too little for them. Therefore the children of Dan went up to fight against Lashem and took it, and smote it with the edge of the sword, and possessed it, and dwelt therein, and called the Shem Dan, after the name of Dan their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities with their villages. The book of Judges give us more details about the Danites taking the city Lashem. The book of Judges called the city the Danites overtook Laish. The book of Judges reveal how the Danites took the city. Remember, in the days of the Judges, there was no king in Israel. In those days, there was no king in Israel. And in those days, the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For unto that day, all their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coasts, men of valor, from Zorah and from Eshtol, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go, search the land. Who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. Israelites, do you notice how the indigenous black people called their lands after their names? They never called their land after the heathens or a random name. The modern heathens have a tendency of naming their nations with random names in this generation. That is why we do not know which land belonged to our ancestors because the workers of iniquity with the Satans changed the names of all the land on this earth. When the Danites overtook the city Laish or Lashem, they took the idols of Micah. And they took the things which Micah had made and the priest which he had and came unto Laish, unto a people that were at quiet and secure and they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from Zidon, and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lieth by Beth Reob, and they built a city, and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. Albeit, the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up, and came in thither, and took the graven image, and the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. And the priest stood in the entering of the gate, with the six hundred men that were appointed with weapons of war. And these went into Micah's house, and fetched the carved image, the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel? After the Danites overtook the city Lashem, they set up the idols from the people of the land they overtook in a sanctuary they made. The Danites made Jonathan from the tribe of Manasseh a priest to the tribe of Dan. The Danites forsook the statutes of the Most High when they stole the idols of Micah and placed them in a sanctuary that is not of the Most High. In addition, they made an Israelite from the tribe of Manasseh their priest. In the nation of Israel, the Levites serve as the Most High's priests. And the children of Dan set up the graven image and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. And they set them up, Micah's graven image, 
which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. Idolatry is the downfall of the tribe of Dan. Idolatry is the downfall of the Israelite nation as a whole. The tribe of Dan is the forerunner. When the Most High split our nation into two kingdoms, the Northern Kingdom, which consists of the tribe of Dan, the idols they worship was placed in a sanctuary that was located in the Danites territories. As soon as the Danites inherited their land, they fell deep into idol worship. Jeroboam placed one of the two golden calf idols in the city of Dan. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made an house of high places, and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. The Danites' idolatry runs deep. I believe none of the Israelites from the tribe of Dan were not sealed in the book of Revelation because the Danites prostituted themselves to Baal and many other idols. The Danites turned completely away to idol worship. Therefore, the Most High couldn't seal anyone from the tribe of Dan. Later on in this message, you will understand why no Israelite from the tribe of Dan were sealed. Dan idolatrous ways did not go unnoticed by the Most High. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones. But they are come and have devoured the land, and all that is in it, the city, and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices, among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. They that swear by the sin of Samaria, and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth and the manner of Beersheba liveth. Even they shall fall and never rise up again. The Danites were the first to be destroyed. Every time the Most High sent an army against his people, the city the Danites conquered and renamed after their father Dan was the weakest point in the land of Canaan, the Promised Land. All the armies would march through the territories of Dan first. That is why they were first to be destroyed. So far, we know that the tribe of Dan were among their people, even through the Assyrian captivity. The book of Ezra said the northern kingdom went to a further land to try and keep the commandments of the Most High in peace. The tribe of Dan was still among his people. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osi, the king, whom Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, and go forth into a further country, where never mankind dwelt. The debate about what happened to the tribe of Dan started when the Danites were not listed in the book of Revelation. Many people assumed they were cut off. The Testament of Dan give us information about Dan the progenitor of the tribe of Dan, as well as what happened to the tribe of Dan. In the Testament of Dan, Dan said to his children that he struggled with the spirit of jealousy, which result of him desiring to kill his brother Joseph. Dan confessed to his children that he rejoiced on the day his brother Joseph was sold. I confess, therefore, this day to you, my children, that in my heart I resolve on the death of Joseph, my brother, the true and good man. And I rejoice that he was sold because his father loved him more than us. For the spirit of jealousy and vain glory said to me, Though thyself also art his son, and one of the spirits of Belar stirred me up, saying, Take this sword, and with it slay Joseph, so shall thy father love thee when he is dead. Dan said to his children that the spirit of anger persuaded him to destroy Joseph, his brother. Because Joseph was a man of the Most High and the Most High walked with Joseph, Dan never got the opportunity to kill Joseph. Now this is the spirit of anger that persuaded me to crush Joseph as a leopard crusheth a kid. But the God of my fathers did not suffer him to fall into my hands. 
so that I should find him alone and slay him and cause a second tribe to be destroyed in Israel. Dan's desire to kill Joseph and how the Satans pursue him to convince him to slay his own brother remind me of the story of Cain and Abel. Cain was also seduced by Satan to kill his brother. Satan convinced him that Adam loved Abel more than him. Cain allowed the spirit of anger to overtake him and Cain killed his brother Abel. Israelites, the Satans is always there whispering evil into your minds. The scriptures is correct when they say to cast down every imagination that rise against the knowledge of the Most High. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If you don't cast down the wicked imaginations, the unclean spirit of anger and many other unclean spirits will destroy your life. If you're an Israelite that is easily influenced and you don't know how to cast down the wicked imaginations, you share similar struggles with Dan. Remember, you were born on a battlefield. The Satans will wage war with you until the end. The scriptures say you will reap if you faint not. Stand strong and put on the whole armor of the Most High. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Put on the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Israelites, remember, the Most High gave you power over all scorpions, serpents, and all the power of the enemy. By no means could they hurt you. Every day you must fight. Dan said to his children to keep themselves from the lying spirit and the spirit of anger. Dan said to his children that the spirit of anger caused blindness and the spirit of anger stopped you from seeing truth. And now, my children, behold, I am dying. And I tell you of a truth that unless ye keep yourselves from the spirit of lying and of anger and love truth and long suffering, ye shall perish. For anger is blindness and does not suffer one to see the face of any man with truth. The scripture said in the book of James that everyone should be slow to speak and slow to become angry. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness the most high desire. Dan continued to warn his children about the spirit of anger, telling them that the spirit of anger make you create your own reality. Anger and the lying spirit make a person work all kinds of iniquity. When the person commit abominations, they will justify the sin because they cannot see correctly. The spirit of anger truly blind the mind. For the spirit of anger encompasseth him with the net of deceit, and blindeth his eyes, and through lying darkeneth his mind, and giveth him his own peculiar vision, and wherewith accompanyeth his eyes with hatred of heart, so as to be envious of his brother. For anger is an evil thing, my children, for it troubled even the soul itself. And the body of the angry man it maketh its own, and over his soul it getteth the mastery, and it bestoweth upon the body power that it may work all iniquity. And when the body does all these things, the soul justifieth what is done, since it seeth not aright. The scriptures let us know that Satan is a liar and the father of lies. Dan said to his children that the spirit of wrath and the lying spirit is at the right hand of Satan. Through those spirits, Satan's will will be done. The book of Revelation said to us that Satan has come down to us with great wrath. And though the wrathful man be weak, yet hath he a power twofold of that which is by nature. For wrath hath aided such in lawlessness. This spirit goeth always with lying at the right hand of Satan, that with cruelty and lying his works may be wrought. Understanding ye, therefore, the power of wrath, that it is vain. Dan warned his children about several unclean spirits that will cause their demise. Dan said to his children to keep the commandments, statutes, and laws of the Most High. All of the patriarchs of our nation warned their children to keep the commandments and laws of the Most High. The Israelites never seem to listen to the ancestors when they say obey the laws of the Most High. Dan said to his children, in the last days, the Danites will depart from the Most High. The Danites will provoke the Levites to anger. The Danites will fight against Judah. Dan said they would not prevail against Levi and Judah. 
because the prince over Israel, the holy angel Michael, would guide them both. I know that in the last days ye shall depart from the Lord, and ye shall provoke Levi unto anger, and fight against Judah, but ye shall not prevail against them, for an angel of the Lord shall guide them both, for by them shall Israel stand. Like all the tribes, the Danites departed from the Most High. The Danites fought against the Levites and Judah when the Most High split our nation into two kingdoms. One of the golden calf idols was placed in Dan. The Danites made Israelites from various tribes serve as their priests. I believe this is what provoked the Levites to anger. When the Danites made a people who are not priests stand in a sanctuary that is not of the Most High, the Levites' inheritance is the priesthood in the heavens. I can see how the Danites' actions provoked the Levites to anger. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their coasts. But the Levites left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem. But Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. And he ordained him priests for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. The Danites behavior of giving the inheritance of our people to the heathens and strangers, a people that is not our people, is very common in this generation. There are many Israelites giving the heathens inheritance that don't belong to them. Esau is a very good example. The Israelites gave the serpent seed Esau's identity and inheritance. Some Israelites will give the strangers and heathens the Israelite identity. If you do this, the tribe of Dan may be your tribe. Dan said to his children that they will follow the ways of the heathens. They will do all the abominations of the heathens. Dan said his sons will go whoring after women of the lawless ones. The spirit of wickedness will operate in them. And whensoever ye depart from the Lord, ye shall walk in all evil and work the abominations of the Gentiles, going a whoring after women of the lawless ones, while with all wickedness the spirit of wickedness work in you. The indigenous black males in our communities have started many strange movements. Their movements always involve the strange women. Presently, there are many pursuing strange flesh all over the world. Those who participate in these wicked movements are the ones the spirit of wickedness is operating in. Dan said he read in the book of Enoch, the very book many heathens discredit. Now some Israelites are discrediting the book of Enoch and many other books that reveal truth they haven't heard. Especially when I tell them that the holy angel Michael is their prince using the so-called lost books. Dan said to his children, they will make Satan their prince. I wish I could get my hands on that version of the book of Enoch. I will further destroy the kingdom of the Satans with it. For I have read in the book of Enoch the righteous that your prince is Satan, and that all the spirit of wickedness and pride will conspire to attend constantly on the sons of Levi to cause them to sin before the Lord. You heard in the testament of Dan that the Danites will cause the Levites to error. They will conspire against the Levites. If the tribe of Dan is missing and not among their people according to some doctrines, the Danites seems to be very close to the Israelites if they're able to conspire against their brethren. I can't skip over that Dan said, Satan is the prince to the Danites. I said to you Israelites, Satan imitates everything the Most High does. The Most High set a prince over his people and all of the righteous. Satan set a prince over the people as well, the false Messiah. Dan confirmed that Satan is the prince of this world. Just as the holy angel Michael is the prince over our people and all of the righteous. I will rejoice on that great day when Israelites truly understand who their prince is and his role. Dan said his sons would draw near to Levi and sin with them. Dan said Judah would be covetous, plundering other men's goods like lions. And my sons will draw near to Levi and sin with them in all things. And the sons of Judah will be covetous, plundering other men's goods like lions. In the Testament of Dan, Dan revealed that the tribe of Dan will be led into captivity with Levi and Judah. 
From the land of their captivity, the Danites would share in the curses and the plagues of Egypt and all the evil of the Gentiles. Therefore shall ye be led away with them into captivity, and there shall ye receive all the plagues of Egypt and all the evils of the Gentiles. To all the people looking for the tribe of Dan, Dan was scattered with Judah and Levi. I can see a lot of the characteristics of the Danites in the diaspora. According to the Testament of Dan, the tribe of Dan was not cut off. The Most High may not have sealed them because of their idolatrous ways. Dan is scattered according to the Testament of Dan. I have said to you that the Most High is a merciful father. If the Danites return to the Most High, they will obtain mercy. The Most High will accept them just like he accepts his people and the strangers that repent and return to serve him in the spirit and in truth. And so when ye return to the Lord, ye shall obtain mercy, and he shall bring you into his sanctuary, and he shall give you peace. In the Testament of Judah, Judah mentioned the tribe of Dan and their position in the coming kingdom. Judah said the tribe of Dan would be over the luminaries. Judah also said that all of the Patriarch to our nation will rise along with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The sons of Jacob will be the head of their tribes. And after these things shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob arise unto life, and I and my brethren shall be chiefs of the tribes of Israel. And the Lord blessed Levi and the angel of the presence, me, the powers of glory, Simeon, the heavens, Reuben, the earth, Asakar, the sea, Zebulon, the mountains, Joseph, the tabernacle, Benjamin, the luminaries, Dan, Eden, Naphtali, the sun, Gad, the moon, Asher. In the new Jerusalem that will be in the coming kingdom, there will be 12 gates. All of the 12 gates are named after the 12 tribes of Israel. If the tribe of Dan was cut off, then there would be 11 gates in the coming kingdom. Dan spoke about the Messiah to his children. Dan said there will be one that will rise from Judah and Levi that will be the salvation of the Lord. The one that is coming from the tribe of Judah will war against Belair. Belair is Satan. And there shall arise unto you from the tribe of Judah and of Levi the salvation of the Lord, and he shall make war against Belair. The prince of Israel will fight against the prince of this world. He will execute vengeance on our enemies. He will reverse our captivity, just like the book of Daniel said he would do. All who call on the Most High, he will give peace. Dan said to his children that the Israelites will rest in Eden. In the new Jerusalem, the righteous will rejoice. Dan told his children to fear the Most High and to beware of Satan and his spirits. Dan told his children to draw near to the Most High and to the angel that intercedes for our people. And now fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Draw near unto God and unto the angel that interceded for you, for he is a mediator between God and men. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. Dan said Satan is eager to destroy all who call on the Most High. Dan said the angel of peace will strengthen the Israelites, just like the Messiah will do. Dan said to his children, if they depart from unrighteousness and cleave to righteousness, the tribe of Dan will be saved. Depart, therefore, from all unrighteousness and cleave unto the righteousness of God, and your race will be saved forever. Dan asked his children to bury him next to his fathers. After Dan commended his children, he transitioned to the afterlife. Dan was 125 years old when he died. His children did take his bones when they left Egypt, and they buried him next to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And bury me near my fathers. And when he had said these things, he kissed them and fell asleep at a good old age. And his sons buried him, and after that they carried up his bones and placed them near Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. The very last scripture in the Testament of Dan said that Dan prophesied to his children that they will forget their God and become alienated from their people and from the family of their seed. Nevertheless, Dan prophesied unto them that they should forget their God and should be alienated from the land of their inheritance 
and from the race of Israel and from the family of their seed. The scripture you just heard was added after Dan finished instructing his children. Dan said to his children they would be scattered with Judah and Levi. How can they be alienated from their people if they were scattered? Regardless if that scripture is true, many of us in the awakening have been alienated from our people and families strictly for our beliefs and walking away from the beast religion. I personally believe that scripture was added to cause confusion. I share the last scripture in the Testament of Dan with you for you to make your own decision. Israelites, I can see a lot of the characteristics of the Danites among us today, as well as the other tribes. As the Most High revealed the truth about his people, remember to remain humble before him. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The Israelite nation is in captivity because of sin. As we review the testaments of the 12 patriarchs to our nation, the transgression of our people is massive. I hope the testaments of our fathers encourage every Israelite to repent and draw near to the Most High. The Danites may have been overshadowed in the scriptures, but their legacy is here for all who want to know what the word of the Most High say about the Danites. Every tribe is important in the nation of Israel. None of the tribes are cut off. The Holy One of Israel is faithful. Many are called, but a few is chosen. Israelites, allow the truth of the Most High's words to set you free. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, this is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes. Thou shalt not go over thither. The tribe of Naphtali is one of the few tribes that is low-key and unproblematic in the scriptures. When it comes to the awakening, the tribe of Naphtali is at the forefront of the missing tribes. The main reason the tribe of Naphtali is at the center of controversy, the doctrines of devils created in the awakening by the workers of iniquity. Israelites, you have to come to the realization not all in the awakening was awakened by the Most High. There are many disciples of Satan in the awakening creating doctrines that is causing the people of the Most High to stumble. 
the scriptures made it clear that Satan's ministers transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Israelites, it is important to ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment, as well as wisdom, to overcome the arrows coming from the Satans and the workers of iniquity in the last days. The disciples of Satan created many popular doctrines in the awakening that has become a stumbling block to many Israelites. The doctrines of devils is misleading many and increasing the sins of the Israelites. The word of the Most High said, be careful about what is popular with the world. What is popular with the world is an abomination with the Most High. And he said unto them, ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The tribe of Naphtali, as well as all the twelve tribes, are part of a widely circulating doctrine of devil that stems from the false twelve tribe chart in the awakening. The testament of Naphtali will put an end to the false twelve tribe chart. The disciples of Satan claim the modern people living in Argentina and Chile are from the tribe of Naphtali while other charts say the tribe of Naphtali are the Hawaiians and many other modern nations. The disciples of Satan don't know the whereabouts of the tribes. The workers of iniquity can't agree on the location of the 12 tribes. The word of the Most High say, when two agree on any matter on earth, it shall be done for them. None of the disciples of Satan agree on the whereabouts of the 12 tribes. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Israelites, the Most High is not the author of confusion. Since there is a lot of confusion surrounding the charts, anyone that served the Most High should know that the 12 tribe charts are not of the Most High. The charts were created to fulfill the lusts of some Israelites' hearts. Israelites, the creators of the various 12 tribe charts, know that the charts are not accurate. However, they will promote the charts. Does the fruits, the creators of the chart and all who follow the charts produce, are they of the most high or of the Satans? Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Israelites, remember, not everyone in the awakening that is teaching and leading our people were called by the most high. Many people are following trends. Israelites, that is why you must separate yourself from the rebels among us. In this walk, you must be set apart. The community of Israelites that have separated from this world and returned to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth is small. That is why narrow is the road that leads to life. The tribe of Naphtali is not separated from his brethren in the northern kingdom. The book of Asterisk let us know that the northern kingdom went into captivity together. Once the Israelites in the northern kingdom decided to go to a place where no men have dwelt to worship and serve the Most High, they were all together. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osi, the king, whom Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. The 12 tribe chart shows the Israelites are scattered in North, Central, and South America only. The Israelites are in every nation. The Most High will gather his people from the four corners of this world. The scriptures let us know the tribe of Judah is the only tribe that remained after the Most High removed the other tribes from his presence. The Most High sent the king of Assyria to remove the children of Israel from his presence. Once the tribe of Judah continued to sin, the Most High sent Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to remove the tribe of Judah from his presence. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up. And Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned 
and rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by his servants the prophets. Surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah to remove them out of his sight, for the sins of Manasseh according to all that he did. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. For through the anger of the Lord, it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah, until he had cast them out from his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. The scriptures reveal to us in the book of Kings that heathens are living in the territories the twelve tribe of Israel inherited. The same heathens the king of Assyria placed in Samaria and all the regions the Israelites dwell are now proclaiming to be Israelites today. By now you should know the heathens who claim to be us are not but of the synagogue of Satan. The Most High has been waking up his people in waves. There are many people coming into the awakening, creating doctrines that is not of the Most High. The awakening is plagued with doctrines of devils. Israelites, that is why you must use discernment in everything you hear. If you're unsure, don't be afraid to go into the presence of the Most High and ask for confirmation. The Most High will tell you everything you want to know. Don't scout the internet for answers. You must seek the face of the Most High for answers. Once you ask the Most High in prayer, let the Most High lead you to his anointed to confirm. Scouting the internet for answers will further lead you into sin. Israelites, do not perish for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the Lord thy God, I will also forget thy children. In the testament of Levi and Dan, both Hartriach made it clear that their tribes would mislead their brethren. Levi said his sons would void the laws of the Most High and lead the Israelites astray. The creators of the twelve tribe charts is leading their people astray. Until they repent and publicly set the record straight, they will be held accountable for their sins. In addition, they will have the blood of many on their hands. Dan said his sons would be right there with the Levites, manipulating the tribe of Levi. Yea, ye shall bring a curse upon our race, because the light of the law which was given for the lightning every man, this ye desire to destroy by teaching commandments contrary to the ordinance of God. The offering of the Lord ye shall rob, and from his portion shall ye steal choice portions, eating them contemptuously with harlots. And out of covetousness ye shall teach the commandments of the Lord. Wedded women shall ye pollute, and the virgins of Jerusalem shall ye defile, and with harlots and adulteresses shall ye be joined, and the daughters of the Gentiles shall ye take to wife, purifying them with an unlawful purification, and your union shall be like unto Sodom and Gomorrah. And whensoever ye depart from the Lord, ye shall walk in all evil and work the abominations of the Gentiles, going a-whoring after women of the lawless ones, while with all wickedness the spirit of wickedness work in you. The very words of Levi and Dan, the progenitors of the tribe of Levi and Dan, is coming to pass in this generation. We have Israelites in the awakening creating misleading doctrines that is causing Israelites to stumble. You are what your father is. Doctrine is feeding the tribe of Dan's lust for lawless women, as well as the tribe of Levi's lust for strange women. All of this can be found in the Testaments of the Patriarch. Naphtali is the eighth son born to Jacob and Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid. Rachel called Bilhah's second son Naphtali because she felt that she was wrestling with her sister. Naphtali means wrestling or struggling. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. The testament of Naphtali gave us more details about Naphtali's birth as well as the family genealogy of Bilhah and Ziphlah, Jacob's concubines. 
In the testament of Naphtali, Naphtali revealed that he was born on Rachel's lap. Rachel loved Naphtali. She prayed and asked the Most High to have a son from her womb, just like Naphtali. I was born from Bilhah, and because Rachel dealt craftily and gave Bilhah in place of herself to Jacob, and she conceived and bare me upon Rachel's knees, therefore she called my name Naphtali. For Rachel loved me very much because I was born upon her lap, and when I was still young, she was wont to kiss me and say, May I have a brother of thine from my own womb, like unto thee. Whence also Joseph was like unto me in all things, according to the prayers of Rachel. Joseph was the son given to her. Naphtali said to his children that Joseph is just like him. Because Naphtali and Joseph are alike, that is why we don't hear much about the tribe of Naphtali. Overall, Joseph was a good man of the Most High. The Testament of Dan revealed this. Joseph's character in the scriptures proved he was a stand-apart man that served the Most High. Naphtali is also a stand-apart man of the Most High. The Testament of Naphtali revealed the family genealogy of Bilhah and Ziphlah. The Bible doesn't give us any information about the family background of Bilhah and Ziphlah. The scriptures in the Bible said they were handmaids to Leah and Rachel. Because of the competition between the two sisters, Leah and Rachel, both decided to give their husband their handmaids as a second wife to bear children. And she gave him Billah her handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah her maid and gave her Jacob to wife. Naphtali said what Rachel did on giving Bilhah to Jacob to bear children through her was sin. He said Rachel dealt craftily to get what she wanted. Nevertheless, Rachel did what she felt she had to do to compete with her sister Leah. Bilhah and Rachel were born on the same day. Now my mother was Bilhah, daughter of Rathias, the brother of Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, who was born on one and the self same day with Rachel. To the people who believe the Most High was taking strange women from different races to form the 12 tribes are wrong. The Most High strategically used a family. The scriptures reveal that Laban is Rebekah's brother. Rebekah is Jacob's mother. Rebekah, the wife of Isaac and Jacob's mother, is related to Abraham. When Abraham sent his servant to find a wife for Isaac, Abraham sent his servant to his family to find a wife for his son Isaac. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Laban and Rebekah are related to Abraham. So far, we know that Abraham, Isaac, Laban, and Rebekah are indigenous black people. Jacob married Laban's daughters his cousins, Leah and Rachel. All of the children born from Leah and Rachel are indigenous black people. Today, the 12 tribe charts is listing the tares that were planted among the wheat as Israelites. The scriptures made it very clear that Satan is the one that planted the tares among the wheat. The Most High did not want to uproot the tares. The Most High decided to let the wheat and the tares grow together until the end of the world. Once the end comes, the scripture said the Most High would gather the tares to burn them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. If the Most High is going to burn the tares during the harvest, why are the so-called teachers who return to serve the Most High in the Spirit and in truth listing tares, the children of the colonizers, as Israelites. Not only are they giving the heathens inheritance that don't belong to them, they are heavily pushing this doctrine in the awakening, causing many to stumble. The tribe of Dan is infamous for going against the laws of the Most High. In the Testament of Dan, the tribe of Dan made Israelites who don't descend from the tribe of Levi priests to their tribe. Since the Testament of Dan revealed that his tribe would be scattered with Levi and Judah, 
I am not surprised that the ministers of Satan are including the heathens in tares, a people who don't belong into the Israelite bloodline. Remember, by their fruits you will know them. Bilhah and Ziphlah, the handmaids that had children for Jacob, are also related to Abraham. The testament of Naphtali revealed Rathias, the father of Bilhah, is related to Abraham. And Rathias was of the family of Abraham, a Chaldean, God-fearing, freeborn, and noble. The testament of Naphtali revealed that Rothias was bought by Laban. Laban gave Una, his handmaid, to Rothias to wife. She bore Zilpha and Bilhah. And he was taken captive and was bought by Laban, and he gave him Una, his handmaid, to wife. And she bore a daughter and called her name Zifla, after the name of the village in which he had been taken captive. And next she bore Bilhah, saying, My daughter, hasten after what is new, for immediately that she was born, she seized the breast and has hastened to suck it. We know that Zilpha and Bilhah are sisters. Not only are they sisters, they are related to Abraham and Jacob as well. The matriarchs to the 12 tribe of Israel are indigenous black women. The Most High did not use strange women to produce the patriarchs of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob married two sets of sisters within Abraham's family. The patriarch and the matriarch of the 12 tribe of Israel are not the mothers and fathers to the tares listed in the 12 tribe charts. Before colonization, the Latinos and Hispanics didn't exist. The whited out native Indians throughout the Americas were indigenous Hamites before their makeover. The most high scattered majority of the children of Ham that conspired to build the Tower of Babel. The indigenous natives in the Americas were Hamites. One of the signs placed on the Israelites is that they will live in their enemy's land, a land the ancestors have not known. The Israelite nation as a whole have been exiled from their land since the Most High removed them from his presence. The Lord shall bring thee, and thy king which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. The non-indigenous black people listed on the 12 tribe charts are not Israelites. They are the children born to the colonizers. The tares are also the children produced with the strange women and men. They are known as mixed race, biracial, quajun, and octoroon. The children of the colonizers are the people the synagogue of Satan used to replace the indigenous black people worldwide. The Satans used the children of the colonizers to change the appearance of the indigenous black natives living all over the world. I will never understand how Israelites in the awakening are giving the holy Israelite heritage to heathens and the tares. They make it seem as if the holy bloodline have no value. If the Israelites pushing these doctrines were awakened by the Most High, they wouldn't promote nor create the false charts. Israelites, that is why I say to you, not all people in the awakening were awakened by the Most High. I know this may be hard truth for some people, but the truth must be heard. That is the only way history will correct itself. In addition, the truth of the Most High's words is sanctifying his people to set them free. The Most High said, everything hidden and all the secrets of the workers of iniquity will be exposed. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Let the truth of the Most High's words be revealed to set the people free. All of the 12 tribes are indigenous black people and they remain black until this day. The scriptures confirm, Israelites do not follow the false charts. All the patriarchs from the seed of Adam have a tradition of gathering their children to them before they transition to the afterlife. In the gathering, the fathers would bless his children and prophesy to his children. Before Jacob transitioned to the afterlife, he gathered all of his sons to bless them and prophesied about their fate in the latter days. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Naphtali is a hind let loose, he giveth goodly words. 
Jacob said, Naphtali is a hind let loose. He will give goodly words. A hind is a female deer. What did Jacob mean when he said Naphtali would be a hind let loose? In the Testament of Naphtali, Naphtali said he was swift on his feet like a deer. Deers are known to become mobile a few hours after birth because of the danger that lies if they are not quick on their feet. Naphtali was swift and quick like a hind. Naphtali said, Jacob appointed him for all messages because of his goodly words. And I was swift on my feet like a deer. And my father Jacob appointed me for all messages. And as a deer did he give me his blessing. The testament of Naphtali revealed his gifts with words. Naphtali gave his children sound advice before he transitioned to the afterlife. Naphtali said to his children to not change the orders of the laws of the Most High. Naphtali said the Gentiles and the fallen watchers have changed the orders of their nature. Sun and moon and stars change not their order. So do ye also change not the law of God in the disorderliness of your doings. The Gentiles went astray and forsook the Lord and changed their order and obeyed stocks and stones, spirits of deceit. But ye shall not be so, my children, recognizing in the firmament in the earth and in the sea and in all created things, the Lord who made all things, that ye become not as Sodom, which changed the order of nature. In like manner, the watchers also changed the order of their nature, whom the Lord cursed at the flood, on whose account he made the earth without inhabitants and fruitless. In the Testament of Naphtali, Naphtali revealed his children would depart from the Most High following after the Gentiles, and they will do all the wickedness of Sodom. Sodom is the city that lusts after strange flesh and changed the order of their nature. The tribe of Benjamin also fell into sodomy. These things I say unto you, my children, for I have read in the writings of Enoch that ye yourselves also shall depart from the Lord, walking according to all the lawlessness of the Gentiles, and ye shall do according to all the wickedness of Sodom. Just because the tribe of Benjamin and Naphtali fell into sodomy, this doesn't mean all the Israelites from those tribes are into sodomy. Naphtali said his children will go into captivity and they will serve their enemies. The tribe of Naphtali will bow down with every affliction and tribulation until the Most High consume them all. And the Lord shall bring captivity upon you and there shall ye serve your enemies, and ye shall be bowed down with every affliction and tribulation, until the Lord have consumed you all. Naphtali said after his tribe become diminished, they will return to the Most High, and the Most High will bring them back into their land. After the tribe of Naphtali come to their land again, they will forget the Most High. The Most High will scatter them upon the face of this earth. And after ye have become diminished and made few, Ye return and acknowledge the Lord your God, and he shall bring you back into your land according to his abundant mercy. And it shall be that after that they come into the land of their fathers, they shall again forget the Lord and become ungodly. And the Lord shall scatter them upon the face of all the earth until the compassion of the Lord shall come, a man working righteousness and working mercy unto all them that are afar off and to them that are near. The Most High revealed to Naphtali the fate of his people in the spirit realm, his dream life. Israelites, let me remind you to pay attention to your dreams. The scripture said the Most High speak to his people in the spirit realm, your dream life. Naphtali said when he was 40 years old, he had two visions. To summarize his visions, the Most High revealed to him the Israelites would go into captivity and be scattered. The nations who will possess the 12 tribes are identified in his vision. Israelites, none of the tribulation that came upon our fathers were withheld from them. Our fathers knew what would take place in the latter days. Just like we know what will take place in the end times because of the scriptures written for us by our ancestors under the influence of the spirit of the Most High. The Most High tell us the end from the beginning to prepare his people. For in the 40th year of my life, I saw a vision on the Mount of Olives on the east of Jerusalem that the sun and the moon were standing still.
And I saw, for I was there, and behold, a holy writing appeared to us, saying, Assyrians, Medes, Persians, Chaldeans, Syrians shall possess in captivity the twelve tribes of Israel. The nations mentioned can be found in the second book of Kings. The second dream showed that Jacob and his sons were standing by the sea, and a ship came with no captain. The name on the ship was the ship of Jacob. They got on the ship and the weather conditions were horrible. Joseph fled away on a little boat and the rest of them were divided on nine planks. Judah and Levi were together. All of them were scattered unto the ends of the earth. After Levi prayed, the storm stopped and they reached land in peace. And again, after seven days, I saw our father Jacob standing by the sea of Gemniah and we were with him. And behold, there came a ship sailing by without sailors or pilot, and there was written upon the ship, the ship of Jacob. And Joseph fled away upon a little boat, and we were all divided upon nine planks, and Levi and Judah were together, and we were all scattered unto the ends of the earth. Then Levi, girt about with sackcloth, prayed for us all unto the Lord, and when the storm ceased, the ship reached the land as they were in peace. According to the testament of Naphtali, all the 12 tribes would be in captivity and scattered. Jacob said to Naphtali that his dreams would come to pass in the appointed season. When Naphtali had the dream, it was after Joseph was sold to the Ishmaelites. Jacob said to Naphtali that he knows that Joseph lived because he sees Joseph with Naphtali. Jacob longed to see Joseph. Naphtali felt guilty and wanted to tell his father that Joseph lived and was sold, but he was afraid of his brothers. These two dreams I told to my father, and he said to me, These things must be fulfilled in their season. After that, Israel hath endured many things. Then my father said unto me, I believe God that Joseph liveth, for I see always that the Lord numbereth him with you. And he said, weeping, Ah, me. My son Joseph, thou livest, though I behold thee not, and thou seest not Jacob that begot thee. He caused me also, therefore, to weep by these words, and I burned in my heart to declare that Joseph had been sold, but I feared my brethren. Naphtali said his tribe will bow down, meaning submit with every affliction and tribulation that come upon them. If you're a person who will compromise yourself when tribulation come upon you, the tribe of Naphtali may be your tribe. When Naphtali desired to tell his father that Joseph lived, but was afraid to tell his father because of his brothers, this revealed to me that the tribe of Naphtali is the tribe that will remain silent even if the truth can set a person free. There are so many Israelites in the awakening and all over the world that are too afraid to speak up. If you possess this character trait, the tribe of Naphtali may be your tribe. The tribe of Naphtali went along with whatever. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Despite the tribe of Naphtali complacent ways, the Most High used the sons of Naphtali to deliver the Israelites from oppression when Deborah was the judge over the Israelites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. And 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. Like a hind let loose, the tribe of Naphtali are fierce warriors. All of the twelve tribes are fierce warriors. Although the tribe of Naphtali are fierce warriors, when they inherited their land, the tribe of Naphtali did not drive out the heathens and the Canaanites that dwell on the land. The tribe of Naphtali lived among the heathens and made the inhabitants on their land their servants. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth Anath, but he dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Beth Anath became tributaries unto them. The tribe of Naphtali is not the only tribe that didn't drive out the heathens from their land. The tribe of Manasseh, Benjamin, Ephraim, Zebulon, and Asher live among the Canaanites. The leader of the tribe of Naphtali was Ahira. And with you there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. And these are the names of the men 
that shall stand with you, of Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Anan. These were the renowned of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Israel. The scriptures in the Bible don't give us a lot of information about the tribe of Naphtali. In the Testament of Naphtali, Naphtali said to his children to unite with Judah and Levi. Naphtali and like all the other sons of Jacob whose testaments we have read, command their children to cleave to Judah and Levi because through them shall salvation rise unto Israel. Do ye also therefore charge your children that they be united to Levi and to Judah, for through them shall salvation arise unto Israel, and in them shall Jacob be blessed. For through their tribes shall God appear dwelling among men on earth to save the race of Israel, and to gather together the righteous from amongst the Gentiles. Naphtali said, If his children will do what is right, both men and the angels will bless them, and the Most High will be glorified through them. If ye work that which is good, my children, both men and angels shall bless you, and God shall be glorified among the Gentiles through you, and the devil shall flee from you, and the wild beasts shall fear you, and the Lord shall love you, and the angels shall cleave to you. So far, all of the patriarch we've reviewed in their testament to their descendants, they command their children to obey the statutes and commandments of the Most High. Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali command their children to cleave to Judah and Levi. The testament of Naphtali revealed that Judah and Levi will be together. The testament of Naphtali also revealed there's a remnant of Israelites from all the tribes in the diaspora, as well as in the land the Israelites sojourned when the Assyrians took them captive. The Israelites went to live in a land no men dwell. Today, we know that is West Africa. From West Africa, many of the tribes were scattered throughout the whole world via the slave trade, just like the ship of Jacob Naphtali saw in his vision. And behold, there came a ship sailing by without sailors or pilot, and there was written upon the ship, the ship of Jacob. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Israelites, now that we know some of the characteristics of the tribes, do you believe the nations and the modern people, the disciples of Satan, claim to be our people on the 12 tribe chart is correct? Israelites, do you see why you need the spirit of discernment? Satan has waged war with the seed of Adam. It doesn't matter if you're in the awakening or outside of the awakening. Satan will come through any door you leave open and any crack that is not sealed. You must put on the whole armor of the Most High. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The word of the Most High is correct when they say the ministers of Satan will transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Just because a person have awakened to their true identity, it doesn't mean they will serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. Israelites, if the testaments of the patriarch is helping you on your journey, don't be afraid to read the testaments for yourself. Make sure the Holy Spirit is guiding you. The truth is out there for all who want to be free by the truth of the Most High's words. Remember, the scripture said the truth shall make you free. Israelites, don't allow any work of iniquity in or out of the awakening mislead you with doctrines of devils. Many are called, but only a few are chosen. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places.
Now the sons of Issachar were Tola and Pua, Jashub and Shimrom, or and the sons of Tola, Uzai and Rephaiah and Jeriel and Jamai and Jibsam and Shemuel, heads of their father's house, to wit of Tola. They were valiant men of might in their generations, whose number was in the days of David two and twenty thousand and six hundred. And the sons of Uzai, Israiah, and the sons of Israiah, Michael and Obadiah, and Joel, Ishiah, five, all of them chief men. And with them by their generations, after the house of their fathers, were bands of soldiers for war, six and thirty thousand men. For they had many wives and sons, and their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men of might, reckoned in all by their genealogies, four score and seven thousand. The tribe of Issachar is a tribe that is overshadowed in the scriptures. I've stated on many occasions since the 12 tribe series started, every tribe is important in the nation of Israel. Every tribe contribute to our nation regardless of how significant their role is in the scriptures. Levi and Judah has the responsibility of leading our nation. Therefore, the leaders will be at the forefront in the scriptures. Because the indigenous black communities all over the world lack leadership, majority of black people don't know how leadership works. Levi was given the priesthood and Judah the kingdom. These two tribes will be highlighted throughout the scriptures. However, the other tribes that are not spoken of in the scriptures helped in many ways, especially during the times of the judges when the Israelites were without a king. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And after Abimelech, there arose to defend Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he dwelt in Shamir in Mount Ephraim. And he judged Israel twenty and three years, and died, and was buried in Shamir. Israelites, I am glad that the Most High influenced his people and the prophets to write and preserve their dreams and visions throughout their generations. Through their dreams and visions, the generations that follow know what to expect. Through the prophets' obedience of obeying the commands of the Most High, our generation know what to expect despite living in a system that has perverted our scrolls as well as hide the authentic scriptures from us. The awakening is taking place because of the Holy Spirit that live in the righteous. The Holy Spirit is the one that tell us the truth and reveal to us the things to come. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. The personality traits of Jacob's sons contribute to their inheritance. Their personality trait also influenced their tribe. Some of the patriarch's personality did not transfer to their children. Levi is a very good example of being a stand-apart man. The Most High gave Levi the priesthood because he wanted to be set apart. Therefore, the Most High had heard thy prayer to separate thee from iniquity, and thou, thou shouldest become to him a son and a servant and a minister of his presence. The tribe of Levi did not walk in the ways of their father, Levi. In the Testament of Levi, Levi stated that he revealed to his sons everything that would happen to them to save their lives, as well as to save himself because Levi did not want to be held accountable for their sins. The scriptures in the Bible said, if you know the truth and you don't share the truth to try and save the person or the person is going down the wrong path and you don't try to divert the person from going down the wrong path, the blood of that person will be on your hands. That is why Levi said to his children, I tell you so I will be cleared from your transgressions. And behold, I am clear from your ungodliness and transgressions, which ye shall commit in the end of the ages against the Savior of the world, Christ, 
acting godlessly, deceiving Israel, and stirring up against it great evils from the Lord. And ye shall deal lawlessly together with Israel, so he shall not bear with Jerusalem because of your wickedness. But the veil of the temple shall be rent, so as not to cover your shame. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Not too long after the Most High anointed Aaron's sons as priests, Two of his sons offered strange fire to the Most High. The Most High did not command them to do so. They were killed instantly. The transgressions in the tribe of Levi started soon after inheriting the priesthood. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. All of the testaments from the twelve patriarch to our nation was written to save the lives of their descendants. Our fathers, starting from Adam to Abraham to Isaac and Jacob, made sure to preserve their final moments with all of their children. That is why they gathered their children to them to bless them as well as to prophesy to them. With our fathers gathering their children to warn them, their warnings will save the lives of their descendants. Also, our fathers save themselves and won't be held accountable for their children's iniquities. Any teacher that was awakened by the Most High and anointed to teach his people in the last days are aware of the judgments against them for misleading the sheep, as well as falsifying the truth. The truth of the Most High's words Sanctify the people of the Most High. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The anointed teachers or leaders of the Most High understand the consequences. That is why they don't play with the lives of the sheep in their own lives. The disciples of Satan will carry on in lawlessness. That is what the children of Satan and the wicked are supposed to do. Israelites, that is why narrow is the road that leads to life a few will find that road. The Most High repopulated the earth with eight souls after the flood. Meditate on that for a few hours. I want to give you a deeper look into the population of the remnant. The remnant is not only the people alive in the last days. The remnant and those who will inherit the kingdom consist of the righteous people from the generations of Adam until the final generation. Some of the remnant that would inherit the kingdom is in the afterlife, waiting until the end to inherit the kingdom with those who are alive in the final generation. Israelites, when you think about the remnant, include our brothers and sisters that would inherit the kingdom that have transition. When you look at the remnant in that perspective, your vision becomes clearer on how narrow the road truly is. I hope you can understand why the Most High said, Hell has enlarged itself. Therefore Hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many, and I mean many, are on that road. I will continue to remind everyone who break bread with me on this channel to ask the Most High for a double portion of the Spirit of Discernment. There are many in the awakening under the control of the Spirit of Belial. Our fathers warn us to save our lives. The time has come for us to listen, become the set-apart people the Most High call us to be. I've heard many doctrines in the awakening and the beast system about the 12 tribes. Everyone wants to be an Israelite. Everyone wants to descend from Jacob, but no one wants to inherit the struggle placed on Jacob for the multitude of sins against the Israelites. Everyone wants to be Israelites, but they don't want to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. 
If you're unwilling to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, you don't belong here. Go back to Rome. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Because the synagogue of Satan declared the northern kingdom of Israel lost instead of hidden, like the scriptures state, the kings of the earth, along with their princes, are distributing the identity and heritage of the tribes in the northern kingdom to their countries. Despite their nations not practicing the customs of the Israelites, nor do they serve the Most High. Also, their nations are not called after the Most High or the patriarch to the tribes they claim to be. Even the disciples of Satan in the awakening are following after the princes of this earth, the idols they truly serve. The disciples of Satan are giving heathens and the tares heritage that don't belong to them. The tribe of Issachar is no different from the scrutiny of the synagogue of Satan and the disciples of Satan in the awakening. Issachar is the fifth son born to Jacob and Leah. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived, and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. The name Issachar means his reward will come. Leah believed she was rewarded with a son because she gave her handmaiden to Jacob. Leah, a black woman, and Jacob, a black man, had a son, Leah named Issachar. Today, the disciples of Satan in the awakening believe the surviving descendants of Issachar are Mexicans. Judah and Levi managed to remain black. Despite the scriptures revealing the sons of Israel loved the strange women, especially Judah and Levi. Judah and Levi remained black, but Issachar, who shared the same mother with Judah and Levi, are Mexicans. The tribe of Issachar transformed into another species of mankind. Israelites, do you see the flaw and deception in the false charts? If the tribe of Issachar are the so-called Mexicans of today, Every Israelite that proclaimed to return to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth should now see the doctrine of you are what your father is, is a doctrine of devil. Their own chart debunk and expose their doctrine of you are what your father is. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. If Issachar, a black man, is the father to the Mexicans, are you truly are what your father is? How come Issachar's children are not black like Issachar, their father? Did the tribe of Issachar continue to marry strange women until they whited themselves out? If you conduct a DNA testing on a Mexican male, and compare the DNA with the black male from the tribe of Judah, do you believe they will share the same DNA? Remember, Judah and Issachar have the same mother and father, making them full brothers. If you are what your father is, their DNA will be identical. Israelites in the awakening, are you sure you have returned to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. The Mexicans didn't exist before colonization. The twelve tribes of Israel existed long before colonization. The Mexican people are a product of colonization. They are the children of the colonial masters and the indigenous natives of the land they live on. The Bible referred to them as tares. The whited out Mexicans are no different from the European males. 
Israelites, do you see why you need discernment, especially when it comes to the doctrines of devils in the awakening? Issachar is a black man, a son to Jacob and Leah. According to the disciples of Satan, his children are hybrids. Israelites, the doctrine of the tribe of Issachar being the Mexicans of today is false doctrine. Don't believe that false chart. The Bible told us the story about the mandrakes that Rachel took from Reuben before Leah gave birth to Issachar. The Bible said Leah exchanged the mandrakes for a night with Jacob. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight, for thy son's mandrakes. The Bible failed to disclose the strife that occurred behind the scenes between Rachel and Leah. The scriptures in the Bible made it seem as if Jacob had four wives and everything was good. Not so. The workers of iniquity want to make it appear as if Jacob lived in peace and harmony with his wives. No. Rachel was a devil. One of the biggest complaints the sons of Israel say they want but lack is peace in their home. Everyone should have peace. Without peace, a person can go insane. Israelites, you have to create the environment that will give you peace. Behind the scenes, Rachel did a lot of evil things because she was barren and angry. She even vexed Jacob when she couldn't conceive. She said to Jacob, give me children or I will die. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel and he said, Am I in God's stead who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Many people want to make Rachel and Jacob's romance a love story that everyone should desire because Jacob labored 14 years to have Rachel. What are they hiding from you? The scripture said Leah was hated. That is why the Most High opened her womb. The mandrakes Rachel stole from Reuben is a fruit that increased fertility. Rachel stole them from Reuben in the hopes that she would conceive. She exchanged a mandrake for Leah to have one night with Jacob. When Leah said, is it not enough that you took my husband, but you take the mandrakes also? Once Rachel married Jacob, she interfered with his relationship with Leah. That is why Leah exchanged the mandrakes for one night with Jacob. Now these mandrakes were sweet smelling apples, which were produced in the land of Haran below a ravine of water. And Rachel said, I will not give them to thee, but they shall be to me instead of children. For the Lord hath despised me, and I have not borne children to Jacob. Now there were two apples, and Leah said to Rachel, Let it suffice thee that thou hast taken my husband, will thou take these also? And Rachel said to her, Thou shalt have Jacob this night for the mandrakes of thy son. And Leah said to her, Jacob is mine, for I am the wife of his youth. But Rachel said, Boast not and vaunt not thyself, for he has poused me before thee, and for my sake he served our father fourteen years. And had not craft increased on the earth, and the wickedness of men prospered, thou wouldest not see the face of Jacob. For thou art not his wife, but in craft were taken to him in my stead. And my father deceived me and removed me on that night, and did not suffer Jacob to see me, for had I been there, this had not happened to him. Nevertheless, for the mandrakes, I am hiring Jacob to thee for one night. As you have heard, Rachel constantly remind Leah that she was supposed to be Jacob's wife. I am pretty sure Rachel made life miserable for Leah and everyone. In the Testament of Issachar, Issachar said if Leah did not exchange the mandrake for a night with her husband Jacob, Leah would have borne eight sons for Jacob. Rachel would have remained barren. And had not Leah, my mother, paid the two apples for the sake of his company, she would have borne eight sons. For this reason, she bare six and Rachel bare the two. For on account of the mandrakes, the Lord visited her. For he knew that for the sake of children, she wished to company with Jacob and not for the lust of pleasure. 
For on the morrow also she again gave up Jacob because of the mandrakes. Therefore the Lord hearkened to Rachel. The Most High honored the covenant Leah and Rachel made. Leah agreed to be with Jacob for one night for the mandrakes. Israelites, the Most High honor all covenants, regardless if you make those covenants with the workers of iniquity. Be careful with whom you make covenants with. The Most High made it very clear to make no covenants with the heathens and their gods. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. The disciples of Satan persuade many to fellowship and join their assemblies with the multiple wives doctrine. Israelites, that is why I say not all in the awakening were awakened by the Most High. The Satans used the disciples of Satan and the lust of the flesh to lure some Israelites into the awakening. Despite being in the awakening, the lust of the flesh is still dominant in many Israelites. The daughters of Zion are not excluded from the lust of the flesh. The disciples of Satan made it seem like having multiple wives would cure the lust of the flesh. Most people are not aware of the drama in those marriages. Just because the scriptures do not disclose the drama, it doesn't mean the relationship was perfect. Jacob's marriage with two sets of sisters was not peaceful. Rachel, the woman Jacob loved, worked in deceit. She allowed her desire to have children for Jacob, deceive her into making terrible decisions. When Jacob finally decided to leave Laban's home, Rachel stole her father's idol gods. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Rachel persecuted her sister Leah. I'm pretty sure if Zilpha and Bilhah were not caught in the drama, they would have had a husband of their own. Unfortunately, Bilhah was caught in a scandal with Reuben, and nothing was said about Jacob's concubines in the scriptures. Rachel's wrath should have been against her father. It was her father Laban who deceived them all. Leah and the handmaids had to suffer. Jacob had to work 14 years because Laban saw that he was blessed because of Jacob. The deceiver Laban was finally judged when Jacob left. And it came to pass when Rachel had born of Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go unto mine own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father, and your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, The speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, The ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father, and given them to me. Too many Israelites in the awakening believe having multiple partners is going to cure the raging marine spirit that deceived them. Having multiple wives is not going to solve the problem. Feeding the unclean incubus and succubus marine spirit with sex is giving the devil what it wants. If having multiple wives is the cure to cause the unclean spirit to flee, why do so many struggle even after having multiple wives? Even if they don't have multiple wives, they commit adultery with multiple women and it's still not enough. King Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. That did not cure the lust of the flesh in him. You know what happened to King Solomon? His multiple wives and strange women destroyed him. King Solomon's wickedness caused our nation to be divided into two kingdoms. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servants. Notwithstanding, in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, 
but will give one tribe to thy son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Feeding the raging marine spirits in you that is responsible for all sexual perversions with multiple partners is not going to solve the problem, but create bigger problems. Most sexual sins lead to many people having spirit husbands and spirit wives. Marine spirits are diabolical, and this kind require prayer and fasting to be delivered from. Albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Israelites, there's always a devil behind the scenes enticing you to give in to the lust of the flesh. Unfortunately, the nation of Israel is guilty of all kinds of sexual perversions. Reading the testaments of the patriarch as well as the scriptures in the Bible reveal this truth. Multiple partners is not going to solve the lust of the flesh issues. The Most High says, submit to him, resist the devil, and they will flee from you. Bigger devils that have a stronghold on your life require prayer and fasting. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The way to know if an unclean spirit, a worker of iniquity, or the Satans have a stronghold on your life? In the spirit realm, animals represent spirits. If the animal appear in the size of an insect, like a roach or a spider, the animal appear extremely tiny, that is a little devil. The devil is not yet fully grown in your life. Sometimes the Most High show you the tiny unclean spirit in the form of an animal to warn you of a problem that is small but will become a bigger issue if you don't deal with it. When you begin to see lions, bulls, dragons, giant birds, you see animals, but they are gigantic or oversized. That unclean spirit has a stronghold on your life, as well as the Most High is showing you that you are dealing with a big devil, a high-level devil. Israelites, keep this knowledge in your mind as reference for the next time you see small or big animals in the spirit realm. Like the other sons of Jacob's testaments we've read, Jacob blessed and prophesied to his son Issachar as well. Jacob gathered his sons and told them what would befall them in the last days. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens, and he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Let us dissect the blessings Jacob bestow upon Issachar. Jacob said Issachar would be a strong ass or donkey, and he would become a servant unto tribute. In the Testaments of Issachar, Issachar said Jacob blessed him based on his characteristics of being righteous. Issachar's heart was pure. He was in charge of the first fruit offerings for his people. The first fruit offering is what the beast religion called tithes and offerings. When, therefore, I grew up, my children, I walked in uprightness of heart, and I became a husbandman for my father and my brethren, and I brought in fruits from the field according to their season. And my father blessed me, for he saw that I walked in rectitude before him. And my father always rejoiced in my rectitude, because I offered through the priest to the Lord all first fruits, then to my father also. In the Testament of Issachar, Issachar described his personality to his children. Issachar said he walked in uprightness of heart. He was not a busybody nor envious and malicious against his neighbor. Issachar said he never slandered anyone. Issachar was a man that lived in simplicity. If he was alive today, he would be what the men of today call a simp. If you're a person that is not flashy and you enjoy the simple things in life, the tribe of Issachar may be your tribe. And I was not a busybody in my doings, nor envious and malicious against my neighbor. I never slandered anyone, nor did I censure the life of any man, walking as I did in singleness of eye. Issachar said he walked in singleness. He did not engage in fornication. In the testament of Issachar, he said when he was 35 years old, that is when he found his wife. Issachar wasn't passing around women and soliciting prostitutes like some of his brothers. 
Issachar said Jacob, his father, knew that the Most High helped him to become a successful single. Therefore, when I was 35 years old, I took to myself a wife, for my labor wore away my strength, and I never thought upon pleasure with women, but owing to my toil, sleep overcame me. And the Lord increased ten thousandfold his benefit in my hands, and also Jacob. My father knew that God aided my singleness. Anyone looking to master singleness can become a successful single person if they allow the Most High to help them. Most Israelites are being manipulated by the spirit of lust because they are not willing to do what is necessary to be delivered from the spirit of lust and all sexual sins. Instead of praying to be delivered, some are trying to find ways to manipulate their people to feed the unclean spirit in them. Issachar took the time to live his life and the Most High blessed him because of his uprightness. Issachar helped the poor. Issachar was an all-around good man. For on all the poor and oppressed I bestowed the good things of the earth in the singleness of my heart. Early in his life, Issachar took the occupation of husbandry. A husbandman is a farmer. When Jacob blessed Issachar, he said he would be strong. When Issachar saw that his land was good, he settled in his land and became a servant of tribute. The tribe of Issachar land inheritance was very good for his occupation in the field of agriculture. And the fourth lot came out to Issachar, but the children of Issachar according to their families. And their border was toward Jezreel, and Chesuloth, and Shunem, and Aphraim, and Shan, and Anaharath, and Rabith and Kishon, and Abez, and Rameth, and Enganim, and Enhadah, and Beth Pazez, and the coast reacheth to Tabor, and Shahazimah, and Beth Shemesh, and the outgoings of their border were at Jordan, sixteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar according to their families, the cities and their villages. The tribe of Issachar is not a part of the tribes that failed to drive out the heathens from their land. The tribe of Issachar and Simeon followed the commands of the Most High and drive out all the inhabitants from their land. Israelites, you know how I repeatedly say to you to ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. The scriptures reveal that the children of Issachar were a people of understanding. They can discern the times and knew what the Israelites had to do. The tribe of Issachar was blessed with the spirit of discernment. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Issachar and his descendants have great wisdom and understanding. We know in the bloodline of the Israelites, having great wisdom and understanding don't equal good decisions. The Israelites have shown that they know what they are supposed to do, but do the opposite. The scriptures said wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. With all you're getting, get understanding. When you have understanding, the Satans can't deceive you. Issachar command his children to walk in singleness. Issachar shared the benefits of walking in singleness. And now, hearken to me, my children, and walk in singleness of your heart, for I have seen in it all that is well-pleasing to the Lord. The single-minded man coveth not gold, he overreacheth not his neighbor, he longeth not after manifold deities, he delighteth not in varied apparel. And the spirits of deceit have no power against him, for he looketh not on the beauty of women, lest he should pollute his mind with corruption. Keep, therefore, my children, the law of God, and get singleness, and walk in guiltlessness, not playing the busy body with the business of your neighbor, but love the Lord and your neighbor, have compassion on the poor and weak. Issachar said to his children to continue in husbandry, for he was given the blessings of the first fruits. Bow down your back unto husbandry, and toil in labors in all manners of husbandry, offering gifts to the Lord with thanksgiving. For with the first fruit of the earth will the Lord bless you, even as he blessed all the saints from Abel even until now. For no other portion is given to you than of the fatness of the earth, whose fruits 
are raised by toil. For our father Jacob blessed me with the blessing of the earth and of first fruits. Did the children of Issachar listen to their father? As long as the patriarchs lived, their children obeyed their commands. After multiple generations, the children will forsake and forget the commandments of their fathers. In addition, when the people have a wicked leader over them, they will fall into sin. In the Testament of Issachar, Issachar revealed to his children that in the last days, they will forsake singleness. They will cleave to the lust of the flesh. They will forsake the commandments of the Most High and cleave to the spirit of Belial. Know ye therefore, my children, that in the last times, your sons will forsake singleness and will cleave unto insatiable desire and leaving guilelessness will draw near to malice and forsaking the commandments of the Lord, they will cleave unto Belial. Issachar revealed that they will forsake husbandry. Remember, husbandry is farming. The children of Issachar would join Levi, Judah, and Dan in the diaspora. Issachar revealed that his tribe will be dispersed among the Gentiles and they will serve their enemies. And leaving husbandry, they will follow after their own wicked devices, and they shall be dispersed among the Gentiles and shall serve their enemies. Israelites, there's a difference to being dispersed in captivity. So far, we know Levi, Judah, Dan, and Issachar was dispersed. Naphtali and Benjamin remain in captivity. The tribe of Naphtali and Benjamin remain in the land they sojourn, but are in captivity and their enemies rule over them. While the tribes that were dispersed, they are scattered all over the world. The tribe of Issachar was dispersed. The testament of Issachar does not reveal that the children of Issachar would have a successful country called Mexico in the last days, where many people would travel for tourism. Also, they are able to stand against the USA. The testament of Naphtali revealed Jacob would be scattered. Every tribe that was scattered are controlled by their enemies. And Joseph fled away upon a little boat, and we were all divided upon nine planks, and Levi and Judah were together, and we were all scattered unto the ends of the earth. And I saw, for I was there, and behold, a holy writing appeared to us, saying, Assyrians, Medes, Persians, Chaldeans, Syrians, shall possess in captivity the twelve tribes of Israel. Issachar revealed to his children that if they take heed to his instructions, the Most High will deliver them and they will return to their land. Issachar said to his children at 126 years old, he is not conscious of committing any sin. Issachar said he never committed fornication. He's been with his wife only. He never drank wine nor coveted or desired anything of his neighbor. Issachar said he loved the Most High and he loved his people with all of his heart. Issachar said to his children, if they follow in his footsteps, every spirit of the Satans will flee from them. Behold, therefore, as ye see, I am 126 years old and I'm not conscious of committing any sin. Except my wife, I have not known any woman. I never committed fornication by the uplifting of my eyes. I drank not wine to be led astray thereby. I coveted not any desirable things that was my neighbor's. Guile arose not in my heart. A lie passed not through my lips. If any man were in distress, I joined my sights with his, and I shared my bread with the poor. I wrought godliness all my days. I kept truth. I loved the Lord. Likewise, also every man with all my heart. So do you also these things, my children, and every spirit of Belial shall flee from you, and no deed of wicked men shall rule over you. Issachar lived the life all Israelites should desire to live. He served the Most High in his people. Unfortunately, his children did not follow in his footsteps. Issachar is another example of being a stand-apart man and his tribe didn't possess the same character trait like their father. The testament of Issachar reveals to us that we can serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, regardless of where we are in this world. If your heart is pure, the Most High will be with you. The Most High will give you favor everywhere you go. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. 
so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Issachar, Joseph, and many other Israelites live a life that was pleasing to the Most High. As their descendants, we can live a set-apart life regardless if we are in the land of our captivity. The awakening is about repentance. The disciples of Satan are creating doctrines that is causing the Israelites to give in to the lust of the flesh instead of repenting. The doctrines of devils are increasing the sins of our people. Israelites, listen to the Most High and humble yourself. Repent and turn from your wicked ways. Anything that is impossible for you is possible with the Most High. The Most High said to Sarah and many other Israelites, Is there anything too hard for me? Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So far, every testament we've read from the fathers have taught us life lessons. Learning the characteristics of each father and the prophecies about their tribes in the last days will help solve the identity crisis many Israelites suffer from. Reading the testaments of the patriarchs can help all Israelites in the awakening to better serve the Most High. I'm not from the tribe of Issachar, but I will definitely take heed to the commands Issachar gave to his children. We can become the set-apart people the Most High called us to be. The people of the Most High, the Israelites, have to stop taking the Most High for granted. It's either you will serve the Most High or you won't. The Most High know your heart. Narrow is the road that leads to life. If we take heed to the instructions of our fathers and obey their words, we will certainly triumph over the heads of all enemies. The Most High will be right there helping his people. The Most High said he will never leave us nor forsake us. Israelites, the choice is yours. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, 